the assistant director of physics digital forensic department at central forensic science laboratory in chandigarh sir has 23 years of experience in field of forensic science with a master's degree in forensic science and criminology sir was trained at various remarkable forensic institutes of india and was also trained by the fbi usa in the fields of digital forensics sir's academic presence can be seen in the number of research papers published by him and by the book on practical handbook of forensic science currently aklesh kumar sir is involved in investigation via analysis of evidence of several national important cases forwarded by honorable courts cbi and nia and in developing the facility for chip off analysis technique and damage cell phone analysis in cfs sir chandigarh we are greatly pleased to have you as a resource person for this workshop sir thank you thank you vishita and uh, aklesh kumar sir over to you we are very privileged to have you here sir whenever you are ready we may start the lecture thank you sir share continue Good morning, sir. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, some problem for sharing of the slide. Yes, sir. He will be making you a presenter, sir. We will be making you the presenter. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Please. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can present now, sir. They are pres going to present. Okay. Yeah, you okay. can. Okay. Yes. Uh, now it's visible. Yes. My topic is forensic examination of storage media uh, and mobile phones. It's challenges. So uh, this is a very uh, challenging topic and very important for the present time because uh, people are using the digital devices. So uh, people are very addicted to the digital devices. Nowadays, people. Uh, को मॉर्निंग में अगर टी नहीं मिलेगा तो चलेगा बट पॉइंट इज रिक्वायर्ड सो दैट डिपेंडेंसी इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द इन्वेस्टिगेशन सो लास्ट ट्वेंटी थ्री इयर्स आई हैव एक्सपीरियंस फील्ड सो आई हैव सीन द लॉट ऑफ केसेस दिस टोटली केसेस डिपेंड ऑन द डिजिटल पॉलिसी now any type of cases totally depend on the digital forensic it may be mobile phones it may be ccd uh, recording it may be computer devices any devices so a digital evidence is very very important for the solving of the cases as well as the investigation also so these digital cases uh, now it is very challenging for us an investigation agency and the honorable court also because of the uh, people are not acquiring the such type of technology the how to preserve how to uh, maintain and how to send the digital evidences the laboratories and after laboratories the uh, reports uh, the given by the expert uh, how to interpret the laboratories and how to be search the uh, relevant data and produce the honorable report so some types of problem we are facing for example uh, i am uh, asking to digital forensic digital forensic about the investigation of uh, uh, crime including using the digital public computer method also known as a computer forensic involved the prevention identifications extractions and documentation of computer evidence store as a data this is the definition we are uh, divided by uh, three parts uh, one of the audio video secondly the computer forensic and mobile forensic so under the audio video cd storage media tape 
DVD, recorder, DVR, and HD, but the hard disk. So uh, tape nowadays, is, tape is uh, absoluted. Uh, it will presently digital uh, format. Generally, uh, we are using uh, CD or storage media, SD card, etc. So this is the categorized by the audio and video analysis. So uh, audio video analysis scope is the voice identification and uh, video identifications and extract the video from the DVR. And DVR, suppose uh, in any activity in the DVR. So first thing, extract the video from the DVR. After that, if uh, uh, investigation agency want to the compare to the person who is the involved in the video. So this is the comparison of the person also. It's very important. And we, uh, with under the audio video sections. Our second section is the computer forensic. So any type of storage media like CPU, laptops, tapes, and server, etc. These are the under uh, uh, computer forensic. So why are I am the divided by three parts? This is the base on the principle of the analysis. So uh, principle of analysis based on the tools. So audio video tools are different. Computer uh, forensic tools are totally different and mobile forensic also different tools. So we are categorized by the three parts. And uh, third part of the uh, mobile forensic, mobile forensic uh, 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 under the mobile, tape, SIM card, etc. So mobile devices is very difficult to extract the data now because uh, due to the encryption or the security of the uh, data. So, so at, uh, this uh, uh, some uh, storage devices are uh, available in the markets or the person also. So DVR, uh, one example I am giving to the uh, DVR player as a micro SD card, everyone knows the DVR. Some USB devices like the key, this is also one kind of the storage medium. People are using, so sometimes our investigation agency think about this is the key, but not as the key. This is the storage device. So first thing, the identification of the device is also very important for the investigation purpose. So this kind of the some uh, picture, second is the, and uh, another devices, uh, you have seen uh, some DVR or uh, some USB devices like the different type of mails and etc. Uh, uh, mobile phones and freeze. Now in days, TV is also one kind of storage devices. So some um, any smart uh, devices, it may be TV, LCD. This is also having some data because some TV are based on the Android and of the uh, on OS. So generally, uh, mobile phones is the based on the OS. So one of the uh, Android, everyone knows Android. Second is the iPhones. Third is the window. And some OS also uh, using the manufactured like Blackberry. Blackberry on its own OS. Nokia also using the own, own OS. Sometimes Samsung also uh, using the some own OS. This is the supply, not only India, some uh, like a Korean country or the Northeast type of some different OS. So suddenly, so first thing, the any examiner, first thing, the identification of the mobile devices, this device having the which type of OS, is on the OS is, de uh, is uh, depend on the analysis. So I have given some example of the, you have seen my picture, uh, giving my picture, the some four uh, iOS devices and uh, Blackberries and some Sunjun, some OS and uh, Binfin also one OS. So uh, this is the devices. Uh, sometimes is they having the damaged devices also we are receiving and analyzing and discussing the cases. We are receiving the cases, not only the uh, our jurisdiction, but overall India. So this is the uh, 
before going to the uh, computer uh, forensic so our device is uh, generally indian so uh, 80% low people are uh, or 70 to 80% people are using the android devices so first thing second is the after that the second uh, position is the ios devices window uh, now is day totally stops because microsoft returned the nokia uh, company and uh, window now it is very few or one or two percent we have received in the cases uh, uh, third is the some uh, korean or chinese os or northeast uh, or bar barmin uh, countries so we are receiving very few cases maybe 0.5 percent so this is the situation of the india so uh, this is the uh, people are not uh, aware of the how to handle the devices because so uh, how to handle so this is the uh, one problem or one challenge is for the as for the user end why because of the user also invited to the crime why because if you are going to the install the any apps any apps in the mobile phones you are also invited to the ssd devices why because suppose you are going to the uh, google play and download the apps lock app you are the click the app installed and that time this apps wants to allow the ssd your gallery your contacts your messages why to necessary to allow this such type of permission you are not thinking so uh, my dear user very um, very big uh, challenge for you because you are also invited to access my gallery so access to your gallery so people are not aware ki what what type of people you are accessing your devices because uh, sometimes you doesn't know only one example uh, some year back uh, one news coming out from the jio jio are giving to one year uh, service for free of cost why you are thinking the why giving to the one year nothing every person go to the line and collect the jio sim this jio sim was to only for the aadhar card if you are submit to the aadhar card then they are uh, taking the all information about you that information is very important for the digital awareness or the digital media this is because sometimes we are not knows or I, we are receiving the calls from any uh, person it may be for the, it may be uh, any companies so why they they have uh, your uh, numbers no because user not aware this platform because this platform is very challenging or sometimes having the you have uh, so many user uh, receive the call from the bank but this is not the bank people they are the forced people they are asking to your pin or something or etc why because they are purchasing your contact from the such agencies your data is very valuable this data is already broken on net in big big amount so this is the situation so my dear user such type of activity don't allow your access is the devices or gallery or etc suppose uh, suppose you want to use only two or three apps so uh, it is my uh, advice to uh, user uh don't uh, install the more than 10 apps or etc because if you really use then okay other otherwise sometimes you use then definitely stop because they are assessing your data your personal data also assess but some people are affected and blackmailing so that activity is increasing the crime blackmailing crimes 
I am also doing one research uh, on this topic. Uh, presently, is very uh, famous uh, uh, crime is going on, sextortion. This sextortion cases only used uh, on Facebook, social media. They are uh, uh, targeted to the young couple of, of the uh, men's. They are uh, searching for the such type of couple and the, they are giving to the request from the uh, uh, Facebook and suddenly, hi, I am the Rasmi and so and so. So after that, you are uh, come on the WhatsApp. Immediately, they are giving to the WhatsApp number or a WhatsApp number. You are uh, taking some uh, show and show and uh, going to the hot, hot, hot talk. After that, they are uh, some bunch to some uh, unsocial activities. That unsocial activities is the very dangerous. After that, that people are not a, any female. They are the male. The male already uh, produce some uh, objectionable material. That objection material, based on this objection, they are blackmailing the and asking to do some amount. I am also uh, published some paper on this base. After that, the people uh, asking some money or uh, talk to the I am uh, asking from the CBI and etc. something. So this type of activity going on. So I, as for my case study or the uh, R&D base, maximum people are sitting in the Rajasthan. So this is very dangerous. So uh, as a user, all time we want to alert because uh, I don't know which type of people are doing such type of activities. So this is the situation for uh, at present. Uh, okay, this is the computer forensic methodology. First thing, uh, uh, any uh, we are supposed to uh, receive the CPU and. Um, uh, how to uh, analyze so first thing uh, our laboratory is uh, having the uh, facility for opening the space uh, with uh, under the uh, under the camera because why i am the opening the cases under the uh, camera because sometimes the uh, investigation agency mention in the forwarding note uh, the one cpu contained in the two hard disks suppose but after opening, we want uh, we are found in only one hard disk. So another hard disk, who is the response? Civil person, investigation agency, or the expert? So this is the a very big problem for the scientist. Sometimes agency definitely uh, ask in front of the honorable court. Ah, I am sending to two hard disks, sir. Definitely, uh, I don't know, sir. Uh, it may be. Uh, misplaced on his labs. So remove this type of query or activities. We are open all type of cases, all type of digital cases under the cameras. First, after opening the camera and uh, satisfied with the all formalities like the sealing impressions or preservation activities, parcels numbers, or uh, a description of parcel, all are matched then going to the acquiring of the evidence without altering or damaging the original experts. First thing, imaging after imaging, uh, second is the authentication of the exhibit because uh, authentication is the first thing because uh, any alteration, any, uh, any changes of the uh, hashing. So the hashing is the authentication of the exhibit. After that, the analysis. Analysis uh, is the uh, depend on the query. Query in the sense of the people are asking to be some searching of the any uh, documentation, any pictures, videos. This is the such type of query. After that, sometimes people are asking to be some uh, betting, uh, sometimes they say IPL, SATA, or etc. or tally. This is type of activity is going on. So uh, this, uh, suppose expert, uh, where to go to the expert? Expert is decided to the tool on the base on the queries. 
suppose we, uh, people are asking for the only document is so we are definitely go to the in case or the FD case or uh, suppose uh, uh, investigation asked to the only for the system information so IP address etc so then go to the FD case so the uh, so many types of tools are available in the laboratory we have advanced tools available in laboratory so this is the methodology after that uh, this is the computer forensic step uh, I've seen uh, identification, seizure, authentications, acquisitions, analysis, and presentation. Uh, uh, presentations. So presentation in the sense of the vulnerable report. After receiving the report, definitely presenting the vulnerable reports. What type of uh, evidence? And uh, this is the uh, some software uh, we are using in case uh, FTK uh, and. Uh, Cyber suit uh, is uh, and um, uh, forensic explorer. So this is the some tools are available. Second is the uh, this is the analysis. Analysis uh, uh, it is the uh, process ceiling and crime relevant data, deleted data, unlocated space, less space, emails, MAC address and times, keyboards, cookies, log system files etc so this is the uh, queries let's see then the uh, challenging of the investigation officers so there is a big challenge for the investigation officer over india so because of the some problem in our system because of the maximum people are not aware to how to handle the digital evidences why handling of the digital evidence is also very important thing because digital evidence is very sophisticated so first is the first duty the investigation officer protectant of the free environment one of the uh, pressure second is the moisture third is the uh, temperature so uh, this is the uh, and uh, uh, this is the three uh, ma uh, major uh, step of the handling of the digital evidence. But nowadays we are receiving the cases of uh, So we are generally using, uh, receiving the cases uh, from the investigation agency, the Thali types. So agency, they are uh, using the only cloth. So suppose a mobile phone uh, put in the one uh, white color cloth, and uh, not from the front. No, no, no. I will show you some example. Can you tell me? Yeah, you. Such type of devices they are sending. This is the laptop. Okay, fine. No problem. This type of because of the laptop is okay. CPU uh, is okay. No problem. But mobile is not accepted. Such type of packing. Why? Because mobile devices is very uh, sophisticated compared to the laptop and CPU. Because of CPU and laptop, uh, we are not going to the analysis of the CPU and laptop. We are go, uh, going to the analysis only the hard disk in the, in the laptop and CPU. But mobile devices, we are going to the mobile devices analysis. So this type of uh, sealing or packing not accepted. Why? This is the three uh, regions. One of the, it may be damaged for the any pressure because maximum smartphone having the facility touch. So touch is very sensitive, first thing. Second is the, if device in chargeable condition, then, any person may be used in in sealed condition. Why? Because the detach you can uh, you can uh, on or something. Learning. So uh, this is very big problem. Uh, uh, 
second is the uh, preservation and sealing sealing also very big problem uh, maximum uh, investigation agency are put the gala on the parcel this is the uh, AU. yes suppose this is the parcel this is the very big tight parcel and you are putting the gala from this portion or uh, so this is how to put this gala definitely two aspect one of the temperature second is the pressure so you are giving to the temperature and pressure definitely affected to the device so this is not way of the sealing and preservation of the mobile devices so this is my uh, suggestion to investigation agency uh, agency no 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 big side the niche wala suggestion my suggestion always using the container it may be plastic container it may be uh, box type of container so container always best why to best because it is protected with the pressure second is the you can identify the devices how many devices in the, the box so second is the ceiling so no effect of the any mobile devices so this is the process of the uh, preservation of the mobile devices especially so this is my suggestion every investigation agency used to this or preserve uh, preservation of the mobile phone use any box type of uh, material so after that framing of the query sometimes some agency asked to the uh, retrieve the whole data from the digital devices very big very big problem i am not problem any uh, giving to the all data because some suppose we are going to the dispose this case in front of the honorable court that time we are going to the uh, problems because uh, definitely uh, public prosecutor the honorable Pre public prosecutor ask the expert sir uh, what are the important of this uh, cases and uh, and no 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 sir i am retrieve the whole data no no i want to the clear cut so this is the problem so uh, this is my request to the all investigation agency please frame the relevant questions first second thing if you want to the whole data definitely i will give you and write to the second question please provide the whole data for the investigation purpose it is okay suppose the people ask to the questions he please retrieve this such type of video from the that uh exhibit okay fine i have retrieved and provided to the uh, along with the metadata and the enclosure and provided in separate uh, file folder it is good good for not for me good for the investigation agency and good for the honorable court for identification of the relevant queries relevant materials so this is uh, a suggestion framing or the questions is required Th uh, fourth is the transportation transportation also uh, um, very important uh, because some people are uh, sending to the digital evidence by post this is very wrong process why because of the the postal men not understand what in uh, uh, in content in this particular parcel they have used the some stamp or other thing definitely uh, postmaster if they definitely uh, due to the heavy pressure a hammer to so that time your uh, evidence is broken then who is the responsible we have received lot of uh, cds from uh, postal they are uh, breaking so how to uh, then uh, who will respond uh, we are uh, immediately returned to the uh, forwarding authority we have received the broken condition so this type of activity is totally wrong process 
so this is my suggestion any digital evidences want to submit in any laboratories it should be through the messenger only so avoiding this uh, situation no data extracted from the patent and pin logs mobile phones this is very big problem not only the our problem this is the world wise problem so day to day uh, we have uh, having uh, software upgradations so have the problem so in advanced stage lot of encryption in the mobile device so uh, uh, suppose investigation agencies uh, recover her devices from the accused person immediately ask to the patent on the password and note down in your diary etc if required to any expert from the laboratory then provide it and uh, solve this particular problem so uh, but uh, we are uh, solving this problem most probably but uh, we are also unable to solve in 10% in higher version of the androids second before stealing the digital evidence whether the mobile device is a complete or not why i am asking sometimes people or investigation agency send to the only mobile but they are not sent to the sim card or sd card so this device is uh, incomplete so it is my suggestion first thing check this device is complete or not whether the mobile is password protected or not if yes identify the password third query should be clear the mobile and digital evidence should be sealed on actual time as per the mention in this seizure model why i am asking because metadata also very very important for the interpretation of the report why because our situation is totally different because here sometimes investigation agency uh, required the any devices from suspected people they are not uh, sealing the uh, in front of the accused or something they are uh, handed over to your uh, subordinate and put to the thana and see but they are very perfect in the documentation listening point my they are very perfect in deco documentation suppose seizing and date time is perfect but actual device actual date and time not uh, uh, mention in the seizure memo okay fine suppose in case in very big problem in case of the any uh, that area in any off scene or video picture are viral that time is very big problem so subordinate people are not kya bolenge shant nahi rahenge they are definitely uh, searching or browsing this particular uh, picture or video so the people suppose wants to access or transfer then metadata will be checked after changing this will data is uh, stable the uh, evidence in front of the court is very big challenges because they people are assess the devices but devices will not seem the actual date and time suddenly uh, investigate is after 2 to 3 days uh, investigation having oh this device is want to send to the laboratory okay fine i have received one case from the ujjain that uh, devices uh, i have received december but this device it to uh, seize as per the seizure memo in august but after examination uh, i was found in metadata in browsing in the up to the november how to possible this device is the browsing in seal condition this is very big problem so my dear um, user and investigation officers or uh, this is very important clues okay. 
this is not only the one cases i have uh, seen lot of cases i have uh, seen uh, one type of cases also uh, after um, fir i want to some data this is uh, how to possible second uh, challenge in the user side location uh, locating and the securing our personal data user always secure our data how to secure they are using the apps or pattern lock or other uh, encryption so uh, one more thing uh, better my advice don't put any data in a mobile devices usable data like uh, account related or personal data personal photo no need for stored in the mobile devices first thing suppose you are uh, stored okay no problem but you have to in, uh, encrypt it that data or the logged in data it may be use uh, apps logs or other uh, applications uh, uh, are available on the uh, play store authorized entry it should be authorized entry uh, not uh, don't allow to any unauthorized entries because you have uh, using the uh, apps and uh, you are easily uh, allow to the or permit giving to the permission to uh, or asset to your device so uh, this is my request don't uh, authorize anybody see non availability of the assessing uh, device history so uh, it is uh, better to uh, if you suppose uh, going to the transaction your device or online payment immediately wash out the your history because uh, you uh, suppose you uh, get the message from the uh, your bank your uh, transaction of the sum of rupees your balance like this and your account last four digits so this type of message immediately removed because people are uh, you are watching or assessing your device so they want so they uh, assess your data so better you remove your uh, transaction history filter uh, filtering of the pornographic material always uh, always uh, user uh, it is my suggestion i think uh, block the all type of pornographic sites or apps this is very uh, thing because uh, some people are also you are watching everything because google also entered your room this is uh, my suggestion for a user Uh, this is the expert uh, locks uh, phone port pattern uh, non working mobile phones uh, and analysis of the damage world or uh, decryption of the whatsapp chat etc but uh, now is date uh, we are already uh, done maximum locks also we are uh, completed and damage solution also uh, giving to the investigation agency we are going uh, to the uh, very shortly to solution in decryption of the whatsapp chat so this is uh, second is the uh, data extraction for damage media uh, i have developed the laboratories and such type of activity going on replace repairing and replacement of the parts and after that uh, how is working condition then extract the data from the damage media so second thing is jetec analysis this is also in damage uh, devices uh, chip off analysis we have developed in uh, um, our laboratories uh, this is totally um, arranged by the uh, country made all equipments having uh, if you are interested then i will show you some uh, of team members okay second is the mobile forensic we have a lot of tools uh, you felt uh, you maximum people are knowing the universal forensic exception device second is the uh, maxev xry very good tool for the analysis mobile data express mobile check and magnet forensic uh, forensic explorer password decryption site tools uh, adf backup etc we have such type of facility uh, problem non working non working phones broken running 
charging problems, display problems, USB connectors, port, pattern logs, number log, basic Chinese phones, data extraction from Redmi. Redmi also very big problems. Data extraction from Chinese Androids, mobile phones plus Oppo, Vivo, Micro Max, and Coolpad, etc. Samsung, Sensui OS, smart uh, uh, Android watches. This is the problem uh, we are facing. But uh, nowadays, uh, I am done this type of activity. Some cases I will show you uh, such type of cases we have done in this laboratory CFSL. Uh, this case uh, we have received for military opinions in Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, people are uh, generally uh, phone in front of the pocket. That time encountering etc. Then definitely a damage of the phone. So such type of uh, damage phone we have received and analyzed and given to the report to the investigation agencies. Second, uh, same thing. This is the back side of the phone. Third is the one phone I have examined three times. One very interested case, uh, Chandigarh. One uh, small boy uh, sitting in front of the house and uh, one pupil are being raped in his mother. Yeah. Then uh, uh, his friend coming out, oh, what happened? So they told me okay, my mother uh, inside and one people also doing some activity. So that uh, a boy capturing the video uh, on this event and uh, this phone uh, sent to me. After that, uh, first time I have seen this uh, devices, but uh, we are unable to retrieve data due to the pattern law and high encryption. Okay, second time uh, forward, uh, case forwarding authority or honorable court uh, giving to the direction to me, uh, I will, uh, I, I have given to the permission to do anything, but I want to the video. Okay, so I am praying to honorable court, if you give the permission to broken this devices, definitely I will, uh, extract the data and extract the data uh, using the chip off and retrieve the uh, particular video and provide to an honorable court and get the permission. Very good achievement for this particular case. Second is the very uh, damaged media retrieve data from such type of, this is also uh, recovered from the military means. Second is the uh, one phone, same type of firing cases. Third is the uh, one case received from the uh, Uttarakhand. This is the dowry related cases. So the people uh, used to hammer for broken this uh, particular mobile devices or they are also used to the pin. So they are put the pin on the uh, chip but not a actual wood chip. This is the only for the processor. Chip in the side of the processor. So we have uh, retrieved the data. Second, uh, this is also one kind of uh, cases, the hammer or etc. This is warning cases. Uh, I have retrieved the data from burning uh, mobile phones. The same thing. This, uh, this is the chip actually so maximum data is stored in this chip this chip called to the emmc so uh, it may be uh, generally presently are using the 64 gb or 128 gb earlier this is the 8 or 16 so this is the uh, emmc uh, this is uh, suppose a warning cases is very challenges because of the due to the heat the maximum component are the adhesive due to the heat. So very uh, big challenge for re remove this chip from the board because maximum component uh, adhesive each other. So uh, this is a very challenging job. Uh, this is another case uh, received from the uh, finance ministry government of India. This is a smuggling case. Uh, they are capturing uh, to uh, 
four to five uh, cases gold from Dubai. So uh, they are uh, unable to retrieve the data. So they are approaching the our laboratory. They are, I am showing the. I will try, but not sure. But uh, I have repaired this one and retrieved the data and fixation of the direction or uh, the location also. They are date date wise. It may be Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi to the Dubai, Dubai to the New Delhi. So uh, we are fixing all uh, relevant queries. Very uh, good case solved uh, from the finance ministry. We are giving to the appreciation uh, me. Another case, uh, the, this is the same case. This is the actual interior part of this devices. So maximum part are damaged. Only the uh, chip uh, portion is okay, but uh, some um, short circuiting we are found and repaired this one and replaced the new one. New one. After that, retrieve the data. So this is my uh, good achievement. Second thing, suppose phone is not working and uh, uh, power problems, then uh, we are giving to the external power uh, from the devices and uh, retrieve the data. Third, uh, okay, yeah. we have time. Uh, uh, you see the, uh, generally, uh, um, problem face in the honorable court. So one of the identification of the relevant data, this is also very big problem and metadata analysis of the file also very important. So I will show you one my report and how to interpret the data. So this is my PDF report. Then, so uh, uh, your participant uh, in law person with this very important thing for you, because first thing, this particular report is who related with the particular device or not, first thing. So how to correlate? How to correlate, this is the base on the device i n e i number first thing so first search in the report this report is belong to the particular device or not so going to the source extraction so you have seen the select manufacturer it may be htc it may be your device is htc first second is the the going to the device information so you got the lot of information in this uh, para, you first thing see the uh, HTC, what is the OS number? Yes, OS number 6.0, and this uh, going to the Bluetooth uh, device address. Yeah, definitely you got it this one. And go to uh, second thing, uh, hot spot password inquiry. Yes, okay, fine. Or uh, and uh, other thing, ah, Android ID. Suppose we are not finding any IMI number. Suppose presently uh, we are uh, our report definitely generated to IMI number. So IMI number is sufficient for the fixation of the devices. Suppose you are not uh, get the IMI number, no problem. You are you have the Android ID number. It is sufficient for the fixation of the devices. Second is sometimes this uh, report. Uh, provide to the serial number of the device. This is also sufficient for the uh, uh, fixation. After that, second point is the key. Uh, our report definitely uh, we are providing the uh, such type of tools we are using. After that, tool is mentioned our report or not? Yes, definitely mentioned. Yeah, uh, UFD analyzer. This is the version version also important, report creation data also important thing. Second is the our reference number. Reference number, it means the your, this report belong to the your cases or the another cases. So I, I have already mentioned in the case number or FIR number or RC number already mentioned in the our report. So this is the identification of the report. Third, Third is the hashing. Hashing is the authentication. So 
authentication of the device. So all hashing value in uh, we are giving to the reports image of hash details. So all has is there. After that, after the what is the content available in the your devices? So this is the content available in the your devices. So content in the sense of you have seen this content. This is the total content of the it may be call logs, chat, WhatsApp, contacts, cookies, user, emails. Okay, this is audio applications. Everything is available, but you have seen some red ink. This is the deleted data required from the devices. Okay, so suppose. Uh, suppose you want to WhatsApp chat. So you go to the left side and click the WhatsApp. You are going to the WhatsApp. Then suppose you want to uh, WhatsApp chat in the uh, particular name or number. Suppose I want to the this number. You want to this one. Here. Oh, sorry. This is number. You have number 9417938. Uh, a, uh, uh, 9417938239. Suppose you want to the all SMS or chatting or attachment from this ID, you have type, maybe type here or maybe search from this one and uh, seen this one. What is this message? Okay. So this is the your manual search. Let's say, suppose Sirsa Home. This is the participant, this is chat body, or this is the body. Then, or second thing, suppose you want to do 29617, or this is the time. You have seen this time, or UTC, universal time. It may be uh, plus minus five. So here, plus in the zero. So, here, no, no any editing. Sometimes you got some variation. Variation in the sense of receiver and uh, sender. So you can see the what is the time section. So uh, this is the uh, plus zero. It may be no editing. Sometimes this uh, report generate to plus minus five minutes, six minutes, or seven minutes. So it may be added. So this is the uh, time zone. After that, you want to uh, see some images. Definitely click this image. Uh, definitely got some images. Okay. Okay. This is the image. So uh, this is the suppose one. You want to be this type of image. Okay, watch. We are identify the bar. What is the site? This is the available of the metadata. So metadata is also very important for the interpretation of the report. So the data is present on the device. It is not sufficient. But where is coming? One thing. Second, when is coming? This is also second thing. This is the important thing. So this is the metadata. This is the root, it need to be part of the data. This is the hash value, this is the size. After that, uh, some uh, I will show you uh, one JPEG file created by the, this particular camera. Okay, I will show you and interpret it. Second. Because of this report, uh, approximate uh, 1712 pages. So uh, it will take time for searching the every 
data yes so you, you have seen this image so you have uh, bought the creation date modified date assess date it means this creation assess and modification date and time is same definitely generated by the particular of this devices it may be send it or second is the suppose you capture the any x picture from the x devices or suddenly you uh, want to send this particular same picture through the any social media then metadata metadata always the change any time one time two time three times and every time will change whatsapp always change it may be uh, facebook any social media always change and hide the actual data this is very big problem okay this is this sms some type of sms uh, this is coming and what time this time network which time of network using this is the service provider what is the actual status okay this is the read what is the content this is the content this number is your google verification codes okay so this type of uh, report inbox send etc uh, audio call logs this is the call log outgoing this number outgoing time is time and duration this is miss call suppose going to the miss call then duration is zero zero then this is the incoming call it is it, it may be at point one three second but this is the time date and times so this is the interpretation of the reports okay thank you thank you very much I have a couple of interests of my personal uh, because uh, I have heard that uh, it is very tough to retrieve the data which is deleted. Okay. Uh, actually, how much time does it take for you to retrieve the data or in case it is impossible, is there anything alternative which you all do as experts? Sir? Actually, this is the uh, not say to correct uh, how many times or how many layers you have retrieved but this is saying very uh, difficult this is the practical base it may be retrieved the one day before it may be retrieved the uh, six month before so this is not a fixed time so time is not matter or layer also not matter because this data is stored in the cube by cube suppose block by block so uh, 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 required software you got the some space from the particular uh, crystal then retrieve suppose they are uh, tools is not have any space on the crystal or space then uh, they are unable to retrieve the deleted or once or deleted data. deleted from the system also it is not possible sir or is it even after deleting we think that we have deleted the data impossible. is it possible to retrieve uh, it is not uh, saying it's just like impossible. This is uh, saying after practical examination, after uh, doing the analysis, then you can say the, this is possible or not possible. If the system is damaged completely. No problem. Man. No problem. We can no retrieve problem. the data. Uh, we, we have facility. Okay. Okay. okay, I can do. I can do any no problem. Uh, system uh, doesn't matter. Any devices, any uh, tablet or uh, mobile devices, any any type of damage, we have given some solution. Then what is the purpose of this end-to-end uh, -end encrypted? Is even if it is end-to-end -end encrypted, is it possible to uh, take the data? Yes, yes, yes. yes. We have uh, we have solution or forensic laboratory also solution end-to-end -end encryption in the user side or the public protecting of the uh, public or the some other user but they are also very uh, smart or hacking 
hacking people always hacking some tools or are available so this this is my suggestion so don't put any personal data or uh, valuable data in mobile devices in because of mobile devices always to access always to access so this is not secure then we do have a cyber security policy no sir uh, in so, case we want to secure is it, what is the best method of securing this is for a general understanding okay so as uh, our security because of uh, suppose you launch the uh, some complaint to the facebook or whatsapp we are giving to reply this is our uh, customer policy so they are giving such type of uh, answer so this is very big problem for the investigation agency and forensic apps so uh, presently now uh, i am uh, doing one project for a sex torsion identification of person of the sex torsion cases we have uh, recovered the 10 uh, 12 uh, people they are uh, belong to the rajasthan only for different area this having id so uh, this is awareness program uh, I, I will uh, publish the paper and the intimate to the rajasthan police also uh, please uh, do some uh, stop this uh, such type of activity they are cheating the people or uh, same thing uh, we are also mailed to the facebook they are giving to the reply this is our customer policy so they are not stop such type of activity they are doing the duplicate id on uh, facebook in may uh, name of the male of the uh, sorry female name sunita mm -hmm. or etc something mm -hmm. but uh, protection or the policy of the government or the uh, facebook or not stop such type of activities so what to do this is a uh, uh, very big problem for the user Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. We have a few questions from the participants. I hope you'll be happy to take them. Please, sir. Thank you so much. Sir, uh, the first yes. question is, yeah. is there any open source software which can yeah. be used for data extraction for mobile or laptop? Do we need any other special device for such operation? So many open sources tools are available, but some limitation is there. Suppose you want to extract the data from the storage media, you definitely go to the Atopsy. Atopsy software is available on uh, side. You can uh, retrieve the data from the storage media or some uh, mobile software also available like Wondershare, Unoshare or uh, different type of software are available. They are retrieved the data, but not the uh, uh, you cannot copy it, you can see only. So uh, this is the uh, one problem or they are not, uh, some limitation is there. Suppose you want to be retrieve the 70%, but they are uh, giving to re uh, result only 20 or 30%. Then, so we have using the data uh, retrieval software in the, very costly. Uh, generally, we are using the 70 lakhs, 20 lakhs, 30 lakhs like this put the standard software are available so you uh, you feel you want to the experiment you can say uh, you can uh, download the atopsy atopsy is good software <laughs> yes uh, second question sir is yeah. there any mechanism to trace the exact location of the mobile user and not yeah. the tower location yeah, yeah yeah definitely definitely but uh, I will provide to one link because I am doing the project. My student uh, or my colleague also doing such type of activity. We are creating one link. So this link I am sending to the uh, person. So suppose uh, this is uh, the uh, just uh, suppose uh, the people ask to the oh please come on uh, WhatsApp. Then uh, going to some chat. Okay. So uh, we are uh, sending the uh, message to OK. Then put the one uh, icon of WhatsApp, including the link. So I am saying to particular person, please click this link. Then definitely go to the WhatsApp.
so some people are uh, very clever they are not uh, click this one because they are knows okay, this click definitely giving some data so uh, uh, some people are click then definitely i got the some information all information even uh, even ip mobile devices or um, tower locations everything even name also so uh, i will be provide to link uh, or how to uh, create the link yes so the next question is yeah. what is the role of digital forensics in the process of cyber surveillance done by government cyber surveillance since this is the another policy generally we are uh, handling the dead forensic so our laboratory done the dead forensic not to the surveillance because this work to the cyber crime team so uh, this is the different thing our work is the analysis of the digital forensic or digital evidences and provide to the report to investigation agency for the further action and my uh, my role is the stable to the our report and data to the in front of the online report next question yes. sir yeah do you think government is doing right thing by getting into our phones and electronic devices and going through our personal data also what is your view point on pegasus issue at this the government uh, government uh, nothing is such type of uh, uh, policy because this is the our um, uh, uh, our system uh, it is our duty to how to protect the our data this is our duty how to protect our the secure data because every person because kya hai this is user also invite to the uh, people the you are assessing my data then what is the role of the government government how to deny because you are also also giving the permission to the assess our data you are, suppose you are going to the install one apps from the uh, uh, google play so definitely the, this uh, particular apps wants to the assess your contact assess your uh, uh, message assess your gallery why to need because of this people earning uh, of money from your data this is the fact so user also invited to assess the data this is a very big problem so i think better to suggest i think better to deny yes sir. the last question sir yeah, yeah yeah how do you overcome the challenges to access the fingerprint lock on mobile phones then this is same thing ma'am this is can be bypassed the fingerprint no problem fingerprint no problem fingerprint pattern or pin three pattern are easily bypassed for forensic expert other people is different before the thank you sir i have another question i hope you will you will yeah. not mind no, so no, they no. use this tor software that they don't identify the ip address yes they they it changes and there are there is another software which says that every 5 minutes or 10 minutes you can automatically change your uh, uh, See, this is, location this is, ip address is the uh, definitely this is the base on the network this is the ip address base on the network suppose you have the using the network on the x tower or suddenly you are moving then change will uh, uh, change the tower or definitely change the ip address ip address the system i uh, this is two type of uh, ip address one of the system ip address second is the network ip address so uh, it is changed so sometimes uh, cyber expert they are they have the some software they are catching or uh, required the particular thing this is online analysis generally we are doing the offline analysis <laughs> wonderful sir the subject yeah. was put forth very very cogently and indeed it was a very good talk on forensic examination of storage media 
and mobile phones. Thank you very much sir, for taking your time here and scrupulously attending all the doubts and all the very best on your project as well. Thank you. Thank you once again, sir. Thank you. And uh, now I would like to warmly request our next member, Spurti, to talk about the resource person for technical session seven. Welcome, Spurti. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I take an immense pleasure of introducing Dr. Mukti Chauhan, ma'am, to you all. Dr. Mukti Chauhan, ma'am, is currently working as an assistant director and scientist at CFSL Chandigarh. She is a recipient of Union Home Minister Award for outstanding contribution in the field of forensic science. In recognition and with an appreciation for her valuable contributions to forensic science services, excellence and innovative contribution as a project coordinator and a keen researcher. Vimukti Ma'am has been a vital resource person in assisting with various projects for enabling advances in proposed computerizations of CFSR for more than two decades. She has published many research papers in the field of forensic science and has played a major role in the publication of documents for quality system as well. Her exceptional contributions in promoting and supporting quality systems have been highlights of her vibrant role in forensic science. In addition to this, Vimukti Ma'am has been deeply committed to and involved in the field of toxicology and has reported thousands of cases assisted in judicial inquiries pertaining to death of prisoners and led the team of crime scene investigators. Her creativity, enthusiasm, and love for chemistry made her a consistent performer throughout her career. She is well known and highly regarded as a creative problem solver who consistently demonstrates excellence in the efficiency, productivity, and quality of her work. Ma'am, we are delighted to have you as a resource person for this workshop. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Spurti. I request the respected dignitary Vimukti Ma'am to continue the session. Ma'am, please, whenever you're ready. Good morning and warm welcome to all. I hope I am audible to all of you. Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, the topic today for my enlightenment and uh, environment of your students of your reputed university. Yeah, this is role of forensic chemical sciences in criminal justice system. First of all, everybody wants to know who is not aware what is forensic chemical sciences. We have seen lots of uh, serials, uh, web series about forensic science, but the actual thing about forensic science is. Forensic chemistry is the application of chemistry and its subfields, forensic toxicology in a legal setting. A forensic chemist can assist in the identification of unknown materials found at a crime scene. Now, what is forensic chemical sciences? Forensic chemical science is a superset of forensic toxicology, forensic chemistry, narcotics and explosives. In general, people call it toxicology, chemistry, forensic chemistry, explosives, narcotics, like that in the criminal justice system. Forensic toxicology. Uh, there are various types of toxicology, but uh, toxicology is a branch of biology, chemistry, and medicine concerned with the study of adverse effects of chemicals on li living organisms. There is environmental toxicology, postmortem toxicology, hospital toxicology, but forensic toxicology refers to the use of toxicology for the purpose of law. It involves the study of symptoms mechanism and detection of poisoning, especially the poisoning of people. Now the question arises, what is poison? Poison is any substance that causes disturbance to organism, usually by chemical reaction when a sufficient quantity is absorbed by an organism. Uh, poison is a very generalized word. 
and this qualification on the basis of the mode of action is here poison is divided in uh, three types of poison uh, mainly corrosive irritant and systematic further corrosive is divided as strong acid and strong base we have heard many cases about hcl nitric acid acetic acid hydrocyanic acid etc strong base sodium hydroxide sodium carbonate etc they can cause uh, numerous harm to the human or living organism irritants which includes inorganic organic and mechanical inorganic poisons are metallic non metallic organic poisons include animal and vegetable poisons and mechanical poison as such diamond dust glass dust harming the people working in those industries metallic poisons are very popular one from the uh, history ancient history mercury arsenic lead copper etc it is said that napoleon was killed by the help of arsenic poison non metallic poisons as chloride cyanide phosphate cyanide is quite a popular one the very various uh, myths are associated with this poison organic animal poisons largely used in ancient time snake venom anthrax vegetable poisons still used in rural india kane dhatura mechanic poison mechanical poisons i have already talked about poison classification on the basis of mode of action earlier i have told you about their chemical structure and all that now we are talking on the basis of they are mode of action they are poisons which act cardiac spinal cerebral excitant peripheral cardiac poisons are digitalis nicotine spinal nux vomica quite famous one carbon dioxide war gases carbon monoxide are excitant peripheral cerebral and conium despite these cerebral poisons includes a class of poisons which are uh, generalized way known as narcotic drugs pn stimulants pn depressants delirants and hallucinogens pn uh, stimulants are cocaine nicotine impravni whereas depressants are barbiturates used as drugs in therapeutic uh, doses tranquilizers anesthetic inhibitors opiates and delirants are cannabis atropa hallucinogen lsd is very famous mescaline opiates are further categorized in three category natural which is opium semi synthetic heroin and synthetic ethylene uh, in my first part of the presentation i'm trying to sensitize uh, my students to understand the poison and toxicology and chemistry now uh, i am trying to uh, specify those words which a uh, forensic scientist used in his report in his or her report poison classification of on the basis of their chemical properties method of isolation from tissues and other biological fluid the words appear on your screen are usually uh, you find these words in the report of a forensic analyst especially forensic toxicologist poison volatile uh, which are alcohol chloroform ether acetone nicotine pyridine alcohol is widely used all over the world and uh, it's a uh, drunk and driving cases involve these poison as uh, specifically ethyl alcohol in whose trace the uh, the alcohol which is responsible or the culprit is methyl alcohol which is again a volatile poison non volatile poisons are all drugs sleeping pills pain killers antidepressants and various other drugs toxic anions 
cyanide, phosphate, chloride, chloride, toxic cations, mercury, arsenic, lead, zinc, pesticides, DDT, aldrin, malathion, and numerous other pesticides, miscellaneous poisons, animal, vegetable, and food poisoning due to microorganisms. Now come to the forensic chemistry. For, uh, till, till these slides, I have explained forensic toxicology. Now I come to forensic chemistry. What is forensic chemistry? Forensic chemistry can be defined as practice of application of our knowledge in the field of chemistry to solve crimes such as as a law agency or a, or a part of criminal justice system usually you people listen about uh, or heard or encounter the cases arson cases restoration cases liquor cases trap cases check the purity of material acid cases and acid attacks or acid seizures now explosive another subset of forensic chemistry do uh, chemistry division is explosives division. Here, forensic analysis of explosives includes analysis of post explosion residues from the crime scene site or the site of uh, post blast and detection and identification of traces of explosive on suspect hands, on clothing, and on other relative items. Explosives are further categorized as low explosive and high explosive. You have heard these uh, terminology in uh, various news channels. So what are low explosives? They are pyrotechnics and propellants. What are high explosives? They are further categorized in two categories, primary explosives and secondary explosives. Secondary explosives are further categorized as military explosives and industrial explosives. Now, uh, low explosives, I have already told you that they are categorized in two categories, propellants and pyrotechnics. Propellants only thrust and pyrotechnics like heat, smoke, sound, which we used in fireworks, salutes, stars, comets, smoke composition, road flares. These are pyrotechnics. Propellants are smokeless powders, black powders, black powder substitutes. High explosives are primary, secondary, and tertiary. This is the list of primary lad azide, lad sulfate, lad picrate, sodium azide, silver acetylide, mercury clonate, silver azide, TATP, HMTB, NEKP. Once you start working, uh, as a part of criminal justice system, you will able to hear these words very commonly. Composition C4 and PE series comes under the category of secondary. Semtex, data sheet, dynamite, TNT, urea nitrate, ETN, binaries, shock tubes, detonating cord, they comes under secondary. Tertiary N4, AN based, ammonium nitrate based, emulsion, water gel, slurry. These are the explosives uh, which commonly used nowadays by various uh, terrorist groups. Uh, they are very, uh, these, these, one of them as uh, you heard as a TNT, however, its full name is 246 trinitrotoluene, 246 tetranitro and methylene, which is known as tetri. You have the name of TETN, which is glycerol, trinitrate, NG, and pentyrithritol, tetranitrate. RDX full name is nitronine explosives such as 135 trinitro, 13 tri, acylcolohexane, which is known as RDX. HNX, TATT, ammonium nitrate, you heard these terms when you become a part of criminal justice system. Now, narcotics. 
a generalized term used for these drugs narcotics opm morphine heroin depressant barbiturate tranquilizers we have heard about ndps act these all covered under ndps act stimulants amphetamine cocaine hallucinogen lsd charas ganja mescaline forensic drug chemistry is simply chemistry as it is applied to the identification of illegal substances within the criminal justice system an illegal drug is defined as a substance that causes addiction habituation or a marked change in consciousness as a limited or no medical use and is specified in schedule of ndps act 1985 a uh, criminal justice system works on ndps act 1985 sorry a uh, forensic drug chemist has to analyze samples of unknown material seized by the forwarding authority or police including powders liquids stains to determine the chemical identity or characteristic of the compound that make up the sample street drugs is usually known and uh, all these drugs covered under the street drug combination narcotic drug that produces analgesia narcosis addiction for example opiate derived from opium poppy that is morphine heroin and what is depressant a depressant or central depressant is a drug that lowers neurotransmission levels which is to depress or reduce arousal or stimulation in various areas of the brain depressants are also occasionally referred to as disorders as they lower the level of arousal when taken examples are barbiturates tranquilizer alcohol and benzodiazepine uh, where most of the people are not aware that alcohol and benzodiazepines together are fatal stimulants or upper psychostimulants covers many drugs those increase the activity of central nervous system and the body and these drugs are pleasurable and invigorating effects for example amphetamine cocaine known as chitta here in punjab caffeine nicotine hat and mdma hallucinogens are a diverse group of drugs that alter a person's awareness of their surrounding as well as their own thoughts and feelings they are commonly split into two categories classic hallucinogens such as lysergic acid diethylamide in a general terminology it is known as lsd and pcp which is phenylalanine now let's talk about the samples every analysis depend on the samples so what are the samples in forensic toxicology everybody knows about post mortem to determine the cause of death but how post mortem helps in determining the cause of death post mortem activity only provide the sample to the forensic toxicologist which in turn analyze these samples and identify that if cause of death is due to the poison present in it or not so these are the samples from eyes vitreous humor vitreous humor reveals the concentration and level of drug taken before 1 to 2 hours earlier vitreous humor is a very good sample It is sterilized liquid before uh, behind the eye. In decomposed body, vitreous humor can be preserved. Here again, the hair reveals if there are any heavy metals in the body. Illustrates intoxication history because of the growth. Napoleon Bonaparte's hairs contain lot of amount of uh, arsenic. After very long period, it was. Uh, concluded that he might die because of uh, 
I think. In sets uh, which we call larva or maggots on the decomposed body can determine if drugs who are present in the body after insect consumes the diseased body. Liver, the tissue of the liver reveals the presence of the drug, the level of the drug before the death. The bile from the liver can determine if drugs were in the system at the past three to four days. So bile is quite an important sample. Nails reveals that if there are any heavy metals, can also determine if there is drug or alcohol use from the last one to two weeks. Additionally, shows the use from its growth of time line. Blood is a very vital uh, sample for forensic toxicologists. The blood reveals the type of drug that is present in the blood circulation, identifies the concentration of drug and medicine because it is the only peripheral liquid present in the body. So if anybody, any criminal justice system agency wants to uh, identify or determine the quantity, blood is the sample. Stomach reveals if whatever drug or poison were ingested, bladder, the urine in the bladder reveals if drugs were present in the bloodstream in an entire time. So it would take an eight hours to find any substance inside. Uh, normally, when we are part of a criminal justice system, there is a question which we face from the last many years in courts, by law agency, why so much time in reporting? Just a small picture which show why so much time, right? It's not like that, that you provide us the sample and we put it into some instrument and we get the results and we supply it to you. No, it is not like that. A forensic analyst has to prepare samples, records all its weights, confirm instrument QA performed, perform analytical techniques with sample one, record results, then analytical technique two with sample two, then results. If the results are in agreement, the analyst will generate a report. If the results are not in agreement, then the analyst has to perform analytical technique three with both the samples. If the results in agreement, then the analyst will generate a report. And if not, the results come as inconclusive. Following lab policies, retest new samples or report inconclusive. So this is the one screen picture which show how much time a analyst required to analyze a simple analysis, what you people called as a simple analysis. So, uh, sorry. Forensic chemical analysis of close post blast residue. Device contained debris fragments were uh, subjected to visual examination. If any particle found, left hand side, uh, we can see it is uh, methylene chloride wash, etc. TLM has performed color test, characterization, TLC, TLM, any polarized light microscopy. These much number of analysis has to be performed. And if no particle forms, that doesn't mean that the analyst report no nothing found. It will again go for water wash, organic wash, then color test, TLC, again TLM, instrumental analysis. So the uh, role of forensic analyst is to determine in the worst cases, in the worst sample, the analyst try to draw some conclusion from those samples. That is why it takes a while to analyze these samples. Now we'll talk in general, what are the analytical techniques in forensic chemical sciences? Cases, gases and volatile compounds, simple mixture known compounds. We use the GC, which is known as gas chromatography. Students usually studied about gas chromatography. We also use uh, complex mixture and unknown compound 
it was further hyperhydrated technique gcms which is known as gas chromatography mass spectrometry for non volatile organic compounds if it is simple mixture we use hplc high performance liquid chromatography and for complex mixture and known compound it is lcms where hplc is hyperhydrated with mass spectrometry and toxic metals are analyzed by AAS atomic absorption spectroscopy and icp now let's talk about forensic chemical science as a tool for justice delivery system so much expenditure so much scientists such a huge infrastructure for what purpose for the purpose of justice delivery forensic scientists aspire to find methods and solution for recovery and collection of evidence from scene of crime so as to ensure that criminal evidence is recovered and retained without being contaminated and altered it is the chain of custody which is questioned most in the courts so tagged properly by maintaining chain of custody and sent in a scientific and same manner to the lab defense lawyer usually question the the recovery of uh, evidences and the custody of evidences so they are properly packed and sent in a scientific and safe manner to the lab where the latest techniques are deployed and applied to extract prosecutable evidence that will link the evidence to the scene of crime and finally to the criminal so that he or she may be successfully prosecuted now what is the role of forensic toxicology as a tool for justice delivery as such toxicological analysis represents a tool for assessing the degree of impairment adapted by a drug or combination of drug with the ultimate degree of impairment being death toxicological findings are also used to determine cause and manner of death every year many people are found dead in unexplained circumstances they may be found in bed at home in hotels in squads in open grounds evidence found at the crime scene such as empty tablets bottles alcohol can help to indicate a drug or alcohol related death toxicological analysis can be crucial in determining the cause of death what our samples analyzed by the toxicologist for the reports were sent to the forensic medicine doctors who have conducted post mortem and they draw the conclusion and derive the cause of death with the help of forensic toxicology reports so whenever you heard about post mortem is being conducted for the for drawing the cause of death it is a part statement because post mortem doctors can't draw a conclusion until unless toxicological report are with them now let's talk about so much uh, we talked about forensic chemistry toxicology so what is the role and judgments uh, which depend on these reports so i am discussing some of the uh, comments of honorable supreme court in important judgments appreciating forensic science and defending their judgments on forensic science evidences produced by the laboratories in one of the case jaipal versus state of haryana 2002 supreme court observed that the supreme court stated that there is no probability of the poisoning of aluminum phosphide thus failing to fasten the gill on the accused leaving no room for doubt the conviction of the accused under section 302 ipc set aside this all happened because of the forensic science laboratories report in another case 
Bhupinder Singh versus the state of Punjab. Here are the Supreme Court observations. Section 293 CRPC of Code of Criminal Procedure provides that report of scientific experts may be used as evidence in any inquiry, trial or other proceedings of the courts. No hard and fast rule can be laid down as regards the value to be attached to the report of the chemical examiner. The chemical examiner does not as a rule give an opinion as to the cause of death, but merely give report of the chemical examination. The report itself is not crucial, it is a place of evidence, the only protection to it that it does not require any formal proof. In another court, uh, case, Honorable Courts, uh, Anant Chintaman Lagu versus the state of Bombay, the court is stated in a case of poisoning, the prosecution must establish that the death was caused due to poison, that the accused possessed the poison, that the accused has the opportunity to administer the poison to the deceased. If these facts are proved and there is a motive, the court may be able to draw the inference that the poison was administered by the accused to the deceased, resulting in his death. And though all these conclusions are drawn with the help of forensic toxicology report. In one of the case, Harjit Singh was in the state of Punjab. The brief facts are like that. In this case, opium was recovered from the appellant weight, 7.10 kg, which contained 0.8% morphine. On multiplying the same, it comes out as 56.96 gram. The quantity was below the commercial quantity more than the minimum quantity prescribed under the notification issued in this respect. The people who are aware of the law uh, must know that uh, there is a quantity on which the punishment is, and is commercial quantity defined very well. On that quantity punishment was decided. So here in this case, though the quantity is 7.10 kg, by multiplying it the actual quantity or the percentage of morphine, it comes out only 56.96 gram. Chemical analysis of the contraband material is, is essential to prove a case against accused under the NDPS Act. The notification also makes a distinction not only between opium and morphine, but also between opium and opium derivative. So now, in all this context, Supreme Court decided and observed that the fact that it does not relate to the mixture of narcotic drug and psychotropic substance with one or more substances. The material so recovered from the appellant is opium in terms of section two of the NDPS Act. In such part, situation determination of the content of morphine in the opium becomes totally irrelevant for the purpose of deciding whether the substance would be small or commercial. An appeal was preferred on preferred quantity. The entire substance has to be considered to be the opium as the material recovered was not a mixture. Undoubtedly, the FSL report provided for potency of the opium giving particulars of morphine content. It goes without saying that opium would contain some morphine, which would not be less than the prescribed quantity. However, the percentage of morphine is not a decisive factor for determination of the quantum of condition. So the court considered the entire 7.10 kg as a quantity instead of 56 grams. So that's a very milestone. Uh, who knows NDPS Act? This decision is a milestone. Now let's talk, talk about Section 293 CRPC, which refer to the 
uh, uh, would show that certain types of reports given by officers working at forensic science laboratory are pre per se admissible. Section 293.4 says that this section applies to the following government scientific experts, namely any chemical examiner or assistant chemical examiner to government, their reports are admissible. The chief inspector of explosives, the director of the fingerprint bureau, the director of Hopkin Institute, Mumbai, the director, either deputy director or assistant director of his central forensic science laboratory or his state forensic science laboratory, and the serologist to the government. All these examiners' report are per se admissible under section 293 PRPC. Thus, the court can accept documents issued by the above noted six officers who are mentioned in this section as a valid evidence without examining the author. Any document purported to be a report under the hand of these officers as such may be used as evidence in any trial or proceeding without summoning the said officer as a witness. So this is the law uh, which defend forensic uh, toxicologist, forensic uh, scientist, which is section 293 CRPC, where uh, their reports are admissible courts need not to uh, call or summon these officers and their reports are considered as a valid evidence. Thank you. I hope uh, I hope uh, and, uh, thank you so much. A couple of questions from my end, ma'am, just to learn from you with your vast experience. Uh, if you are, you are, you are usually going to represent the prosecution side, ma'am, because yes, we are prosecution, state. right? We are the prosecution witnesses. Yes, you are all prosecution witnesses. There right, is in practice, we know that when prosecution witnesses, this is the result. There may be a possibility that the defense counsel will bring his own chemical expert and tell that there, there is a possibility of giving other result also. Ma'am, actually, uh, this is usually not happened because the sample was sent to us by the forwarding authority. They may sometimes, the defense lawyers sometimes question the, uh, they, sometimes they question the chain of custody, that the sample which was provided to you is not proper or it is uh, altered. These are the uh, points which were raised by the defense lawyer. They usually don't bring their own reports, but they bring their own experts to question our working method. Okay. Since uh, our laboratory, being a CFSL syndicate employee, I uh, know we know that all the central forensic science laboratories are uh, and again accredited. So we have a very set of procedures and working procedures. Uh, they uh, question those procedures and as an expert, our duty is to uh, establish that we have followed those procedures properly. We provide the data in that respect that each and every step has been followed during the analysis and uh, rest is detailed. Yeah, Nikki, ma'am, they don't even, uh, uh, only, that means they are only going to challenge the procedure, what you have done is correct or yes. not. Yes, ma'am. They usually challenge, uh, the uh, as far as uh, my experience, they usually challenge the chain of custody of sample. That the sample provided to you uh, is not the same which is collected by the police personnel or it is altered in some manner. Hmm. So the chain of custody is the point, weak point that they try to attack. The second point they want to attack is the method of analysis that we have sufficient proof that we have followed that. Uh, nothing else I think they challenge. Usually 
defense lawyers don't want defense lawyers don't want to challenge the report of forensic scientists because it's a scientific report it is not based on the observation it is based on the scientific data uh, which they call upon sometimes and they see that data and then just say ask the report date etc and all that so supplementary data are also with us so there is hardly a chance of challenging those reports though they try to challenge the uh, chain of custody of the samples Imam, is there is an in addition to that what I have asked? Is there a possibility that the same sample can give uh, little uh, um, opposite uh, results? Is it a possibility? Is there a possibility at any cost that there will be two different same sample given to two different forensic experts? Is there a possibility that you are uh, your report would uh, either be of some change or a major change? Is there any cases of that nature? Yes, ma'am. In some cases, forensic science laboratories report analysis or report for re-examination to central forensic science laboratory. And in case of any difference, if there, uh, defense lawyer and uh, uh, the final authority judiciary accept the report of central forensic science laboratory, and that is considered to be. Final report as uh, central laboratories are considered as referral laboratories. So there is hardly uh, these things happen because re-examination is a very rare one and it is only ordered by the court itself. Is there any ch chance that if this uh, is is there anything which in your procedure as central forensic science laboratory that in case if one expert has uh, given one opinion. Within your uh, department itself, is there a possibility that you also take it to another within yourself to confirm put confusion hai to? Is it a possibility? Right. That, uh, right. it, is, it is it is it is done in hundred percent cases. Whenever a expert reports a case, the whole case file along with supplementary data goes to another expert of the same division. And this procedure is called as technical review. Okay, it's it called as technical review. Technical ah. review. So okay. this technical review is conducted within the CSSL in each and every case of each and every experts. So no case without technical reviews, no report without technical reviews goes out. Right. So each and every case with supplementary data is reviewed by the reviewed by another officer. This is mandatory. Without this procedure, uh, report cannot be released. Ma'am, because it is uh, most of the times when we talk about section 45 to 51, we right. always, it is an opinion evidence. Yes. And the opinion, that is why we don't value it as much as what we call as a fact, which can be material evidence. And your opinion evidence have a, uh, different parameters altogether. And uh, how much the courts rely on your opinion and then have, I have read cases where they tell that we did consider the opinion of the experts, but many a times they don't uh, take it, they don't, uh, even though they consider it, the weightage which is given to convict may be sometimes reduced by the court of law. It is a very disappointing thing for a you know, person like you all who sit and do this uh, report. Raddin karke baad mein you will feel that our opinion was not considered by the court. What is that uh, uh, lacuna which we have a cooperative or a collaborative one? Because even in other countries, the problem remains the same. Uh, can you throw some light on that, ma'am? Ma'am, the only thing. Uh... What we can do is that we'll just establish what we have done under a certain timeline. We just establish those scientific data and reproduce and reaffirm that data in the court. Uh, as far as my experience, I don't think the, the reports are usually neglected or not considered. There are various other points, as I earlier told you, which depends on the sample of the sample from the crime scene. 
only those are the weak points or the weak part of that uh, system mm. only that is challenged by the defense lawyer and if the sample is challenged in somehow manner mm. the reports are already become never less yes yes so, yes whatever whatever you uh, try to work hard for the report it goes in vain if the chain of custody of sample could not be established in court and a defense lawyer is able to raise suspicion about the sample yes. so that is a very clever trick by the defense lawyers they usually adopt the thing because they can't challenge the forensic report so they try to challenge the sample because our report uh, only it is clearly written in the report that our report pertains to the sample provided to us so it's uh, easy for them to break that uh, part of the chain and uske baad to chain ke baad to jo bacha fir in vain ho hi gaya correct ma so uh, for a, for every clever defense lawyer this is the lecture yes. present there yes. and normally we uh, our forwarding is agencies don't consider these points as a very strong points they don't uh, care about the seals sometimes mm-hmm. they uh, they don't properly seal it or the seals were not match something about the seal will be questioned or the sample will be questioned and then um, everything is easy for the defense lawyer ma'am is so there a small, a small seal and chain of custody uh, is ready to spoil the whole party of the forensic scientist all the hard work of what you all do there yes yes ma'am is there a, that in case in case india is well developed now but is there certain cases where you still send uh the samples abroad in case if we don't have a facility is there a tie up with uh, cfsl has with uh, somebody like that no ma'am we don't send samples to anywhere else we don't sub contract we take the help of other agencies by uh, getting technical know how and then redeveloping those things at our place but mm-hmm. it's not us who send the sample to other agency it is depend it is Uh, the choice of uh, forwarding agency only that where they want to uh, test that sample if they are not satisfied with our report or if they think that the report uh, is not able to provide all the uh, is not able to address all the points then they will send it to some other agency but it is i don't think it usually happen or it's a normal practice okay do you have any Normally, we, we we try to develop those things uh, at our own uh, infrastructure we will include it in own structure infrastructure do india so has it is the discretion power of anybody mou with yeah, anybody right? is this or as for a center for forensic science laboratories do they have any international agency which set up standards and are you all, are we all bound by that standards which we are to follow ma Ma'am, uh, in India, Central Forensic Science Laboratories prepare the standards and supply it to uh, other forensic science laboratories. And uh, uh, we usually transfer our technical know-how, our working procedure manuals to other forensic science laboratory. Mm-hmm. Uh, almost uh, every uh, instrumentation, facilities-wise, technical know-how. it's the central forensic science laboratory who is responsible to transfer technical know how within the india uh, now we are talking about the international agencies um, uh, there is a uh, there is a program uh, which is known as proficiency testing uh, which is done by uh, all the forensic science laboratory this for uh, profic- proficiency testing it within our uh, laboratories and we get the samples from international agencies also so the report will be uh, supplied back to the forwarding agency international agency and we get the proficiency test of our samples to so internal and uh, international agency thank you ma'am you, are, you have questions from the participants 
Yeah, I love to answer. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Very kind of you. Ma'am, question number one. Right. What, what are the poisons that cannot be detected in post-mortems or difficult to detect? Uh, Bacha, uh, this is a very uh, different type of question. Any poison which is beyond the limit of detection cannot be detected. Now, what is the limit of detection? Limit of detection is defined as uh, limit of detection varies with the method, with the instrument, with the technique. So, if the poison is present below the LOD, limit of detection for which the method is validated, it cannot be detected. In that case, the technique has to be changed. And another technique which has lower limit of detection than the previous one, it should have to be adopted. So, uh, we can't say that uh, what poisons we cannot categorize as such that these poisons can be detected or these poisons cannot be detected. There is a scientific term, limit of detection. Below that, no poison can be detected. And above that, all poison can be detected. Okay, Bachra, I think I'm clear. Yes, ma'am. You, you want to... You want further? Uh... Yes, Bacha. Yes, ma'am. Generally, when a person is dead, before how much time the forensic chemist can identify all the drugs present in the body accurately? Before? You, your, your question is not clear to me. Will you please further explain? You want the time? Well, probably, of from... the, probably the participant wants to ask, uh, in case if you are uh, uh, taking, uh, doing a chemi uh, forensic chemist uh, or a, a chemical uh, identification or a search, when a person is dead, before how much time the forensic chemist can identify? Is it after the death or what is that? I, I really feel that that is what is the intention. Kitna time lagega aapko ki identify karne ke liye? If the, if the participant is still online, kindly post it again or clarify it, my dear friends. How much time the forensic experts or chemists can identify all the drugs? Is there, is there a possibility that some of the drugs vanish with the death? I think that is the meaning of that. Okay, okay. I think you are talking about, as far as uh, I understand your question, I divide it into two parts. Uh, one is uh, when a person is dead before, how much time the forensic chemist can identify all the drugs present in the body accurately? Again, data, uh, this depends on the type of, uh, you call it poison. Uh, once uh, the death occurs, all the metabolism, which was changing the drugs into another metabolite, stops. But there are numerous drugs. These drugs goes the... Uh, changes into metabolites in, in just within one minute or two minutes. So for that purpose, we need vitreous humor. So different samples, different limit of detection, different drugs can be identified for different times. For example, if a person consumes cocaine or diastyle morphine and died because of that, after one minute or two minutes, you are not able to get cocaine as it is in the blood, but you will get it in their metabolites. So that is why no specific time frame can be fixed for this. Right? For one poison, if it is a pesticide poisoning, you can detect it up to several weeks, even after postmortem. Right? And if it is an alcohol poison, you can detect it for 12 hours. For some drugs, the time period is, time frame is only half an hour after the death. But that doesn't mean that you are not able to get the metabolite. 
or you are not get that drug somewhere else in different sample as in vitro tumor okay right so poison and if it is metallic poisons you can get it up to years in here in lays so it depends upon whether it is a chronic poison or acute poison no certain uh, time limit can be fixed for poison because poison are different their behavior is different within the body and metabolism is different some metabolize quickly some metabolize slowly there are pharmacokinetics uh, for every drug right so half life period of every drug is different some drugs can be detected in urine after 12 hours so that is probably the correct if i am able to explain yourself so question 3 and 4 what is the effect of drugs on hairs and nails and how can we determine vimukti ma'am before you go to i think the participant has clarified the question in the chat box the uh, i am am able to see there is a question 3 and 4 what is the effect of drugs on hair and nails and how can we determine the consumption level is it the same ma'am no ma'am the previous question we had a doubt no ma'am so the participant has clarified telling that my question is whether forensic science analysis can identify the time of death caused by the poison no ma'am it is not the duty of forensic science analysis to determine the cause of death cause of death is only determined by the doctor who conducted post mortem so those features okay now i understand your question yes, those sir, features yeah. those features are addressed those point are addressed by post mortem who conduct the forensic medicine and toxicology right ma'am yes now should i address the question 3 and 4 right yes, what is the effect of drug on hair and nails and how can we determine the consumption on level uh effect of drugs on hair and nail in respect of analysis we are able to analyze uh, drugs from hair follicles and uh, nails from for up to the up to 3 months or from the date of consumption up to 3 months we can analyze uh, these drugs from hair and nails there are some drugs especially uh, narcotic drugs that can be analyzed from hair and nails uh can you please shed uh, some light oh uh, it's a hair analysis this is this is completely a, uh, in what respect you want uh, hair analysis uh, specifically uh, important in cases of uh, metallic poisons drug analysis uh, hair samples are good for that because these uh, follicular tests retain drugs and uh, metallic poisons used in chronic uh, poisoning and we can test them with the help of hair samples and there is a whole procedure for the analysis of the pain it's so uh, hard that some people consume pain relievers such as jhandu balm amritanjan in view of control drugs consume okay is that correct uh, it is hard that some people consume pain relievers as jhandu palm amritanjan in view of control drugs is that correct which chemical composition help them for their pleasure uh, i i really never heard about that the consumption of jhandu balm consumption means you want to say that they eat those balm and amritanjan if if it is for pleasure i never encountered any such case but uh, i do heard about sniffing these things right as a, a sniffing agent but uh, they don't cause any pleasure or don't cause uh, any analytical impact Uh, i don't think there there must be some panicals this is whole uh, ayurvedic drugs come pains various uh, uh, plant origin substances so there is no 
no such thing I heard about uh, this. No, no case encountered in that respect. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Go to the next question. In BMW case, it was argued that human body has some alcohol already present in it. What is your view on this? In BMW case, what BMW case? Ma'am, ma'am, this one, our case where the five to six people were injured. It is um, that BMW actually was crashed when people were sleeping. And the person oh, the was driving was, yes, but driving was, okay, okay. Uh, driver was Sanjeev Nanda case, ma'am. Pardon, ma'am? Sanjeev Nanda case, that's Sanjeev Nanda case, ma'am. Wo pooch rahe. Okay, so uh, what do you want to ask about it? Body, that human body has already alcohol, already present it. Uh, it's, still, it's still not clear to me, Dacha. Uh, human body has some alcohol already present in it. If the alcohol was consumed by somebody, it must have present in the body. Okay, if you are talking about drunken driving case, a specific limit is decided by the law agency up to which it is admissible and above that it is considered as a drunken driving case. If you are talking about that, and presence of alcohol in post mortem blood. If you are talking about that, there are, it is true in uh, post mortem blood due to fermentation, alcohol is produced by human body after post mortem. So, uh, there are the three possibilities for the presence of alcohol. One, it is, all, it is consumed by somebody, right? If we are talking about the high alcohol, so above 30 milligram percentage is considered as legally not correct. You want to ask something else about that, Patsha? Ma'am, we have. Yeah, yes, what please. Ma'am, we have another question in the chat box. Yes. yes. I'm if not able to say it better. Yes, ma'am. Ma I will read it for you, ma'am. Right, right, right. If a person died of poisonous toxic substance, and if the accused detoxicated the dead body and removed all the poisonous substance, and later is it possible in finding the toxic material in forensic lab? If if the person consume or given the poison, we are definitely able to detect the poison. How, how you people are able to detoxify it? You want to say that you de detoxify it? How, how, okay, I think you are, you are talking about giving antidotes. Uh, okay, if you are talking about giving antidotes, uh, that's very much true. We are, we have various other, uh, we have various other sites from where we can able to detect the poison. If the death happened due to that poison, we are able to detect the excess quantity present in it in the in the human organ after the death. Further clarification required, Vita? No, ma'am. Ma'am, there is one more question in the chat box. Is silicon gel detectable when death occurred due to the silicon gel? It does occur due to silicon, whatever, whatever be the poison due to which that occur, we are able to detect it all. Either directly or indirectly. I mean to say, either we are able to detect uh, the poison itself or its metaphor. Okay, so even, even we are able to detect the gaseous poison, right? Gaseous poisons, so uh, poisons are already in trace levels. We have the procedures to detect them. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. I think my members will continue with that. Thank you so much. Yes, I hope I am able to address all your uh, curiosity part. So thanks for having me and thanks uh, for your giving me the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank ma you. Am I allowed to leave or should I stay?
Sunday, we have already barged into your half of the Sunday. So it's no, that's a, that's a that's matter. My pleasure, completely. Talking, talking to curious mind is always a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. That was really an imbibing lecture. And uh, also, thank you for your time, for uh, patiently and uh, coherently delineating all the answers. Thank you very and much. And for everybody, you have done a great job. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, now, let me myself take the honor in calling the next resource person for the technical session eight, Ms. Sunita Verma, ma'am, Assistant Director and scientist C in biology and DNA division, Central Forensic Science Laboratory, Chandigarh. Man's achieved many splendid feats in stream of forensic biology. She started her career being a junior research, a research person on taxonomy of viruses sponsored by Ministry of Environment and continued as a senior scientific assistant to render valuable services for advancement of forensic biology, serology, and DNA analysis of different types. With more than 20 years of field experience, Ma'am has examined many cases of national importance and scientifically assisted in administration of criminal justice system by reporting more than thousands of cases, giving expert testimonies in courts of law and attending various trial courts in North India. Her contributions in research projects, paper publications, benefiting DNA evidence collection stands indispensable. And finally, not to mention her major achievement in establishing state-of-the-art forensic DNA laboratory at Chandigarh under Nirbhaya Fund Scheme, which is the first advanced forensic DNA center. It consists of four DNA units dispensing over 2,000 cases per year, which is very, very remarkable. Ma'am ma has also attended many noteworthy workshops, seminars, conferences, etc., and uh, delivered many contributed talks on topics such as forensic DNA collection, advancement of forensic DNA, DNA technology, and uh, her presence here today to give lecture on significance and application of forensic biology in criminal case investigation is valuable. Thank you. And ma'am, we were really looking forward to listening to your lecture, ma'am. Thank you. Over to you, ma'am. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Here I am uh, presenting the application of forensic biology. Uh, Ma'am, are you made the presenter? You can click on yes. it, ma'am. Oh, share, yes, yes. share, ma'am. I'm sharing, I'm sharing my presentation. Okay. Okay. Please confirm me. Oh, click, kar diya, ma'am, aapne share, ma'am. Haan ji, haan ji, kar diya. So, to select your uh, file from the desktop, if it is there on the desktop. Yeah, yeah, I'm sharing my presentation. Okay, ma'am, it will take one minute, ma'am, it's okay. It's Is it visible? Ma'am, it, it is not visible, ma'am. You just check, ma'am. Have you shared it with us? It's processing, ma'am. Okay, okay, okay. It will take one minute. No, no, no problem, ma'am. You can start by the time it starts. Thank you so much. Ma'am, you stop sharing and again start my once. Maybe it must have got. Uh... Ma'am, your mic microphone is switched off. Okay. 
your microphone it's is completing now it's completing okay okay Now it will, will take one minute more. No problem, ma'am. आपको मुश्किल है तो आप ईमेल में भेजिए मैम हम भी हेल्प कर सकते हैं आपको. नहीं इस taking one more one minute more. Okay. Ma'am, it's loading the file. File is loading on the. आ गया मैम नाउ यू कैन सी यस यस मैम सिग्निफिकेंस एंड एप्लीकेशन ऑफ फॉरेंसिक बायोलॉजी इन क्राइम केसेस इन्वेस्टिगेशन Forensic investigation in crime cases DNA uh, profile is R an investigation tool. Finding the DNA indicates the direct contact, conclusive result, establish the biological relationship, elimination of suspect based on the finding, lack of the DNA profile is inconclusive. Forensic biology is a broad discipline that includes the various areas of specialization such as DNA analysis, forensic anthropology, forensic pathology, forensic entomology, forensic odontology, forensic botany, forensic serology, forensic microbiology. But here in Chandigarh, we have a facility of forensic DNA analysis, forensic of uh, forensic anthropology, and forensic serology. We are dealing with three. Uh, discipline uh, of biology okay. significance and application of forensic biology the field of biology deals with examination of evidence pertaining to the living beings because the biology is itself uh, name indicates that all living beings or all materials including uh, human beings animals plants and they are associated by, they are associated with biological material and commonly found uh, found at the crime scenes examination and identification of biological fluids like blood urine semen sweat saliva milk teas juices etc and determining their origin either come from the human plant or the animal sources examination and identification of material like hair fiber fecal material nails bone teeth leaves seeds pollen and other plant materials examination and uh, detection of microbial exam uh, organism in food hu animals humans and water samples examination and identification of diatoms in water and human viscera determination of the group blood uh, group, uh, group of blood semen sweat and saliva Determination of paternity and maternity of the individual by DNA profiling. Determination of age and sex of human beings by examining the skeleton remain. Determining the time since death and the manner of death by examining the insects found on and near the disease. Determine the time since death by examining the bone and teeth. 
forensic serology, preliminary and confirmatory analysis of biological fluid, very important aspects of the biology. The origin of biological fluid, whether the human, a vegetable, or animal origin, determine the blood types and secretor and non secretor status. And forensic botany, identification of the source of plant matter like leaves, stem, pollen, grains, seeds, and fiber found around and over the disease, which can help to determine the place of commission of the crime. Forensic anthropology, forensic anthropology deal with the collection and identification of the skeleton domain. Either they are from the animal or the human origin. They found the field of anthropology is very useful in criminal investigation as the knowledge of anthropology helps in the identification of the DS by helping the determining the race, sex, and age of the skeleton remains. Forensic odontology of tooth animal is the hardest part of the human body, which takes many years to de degrade and decompose when the body is buried. Determine the age of the victim and uh, accused by using the odont uh, forensic odontology examination. Forensic pathology, it deals with the detailed external and internal examination of the diseased body through the autopsy. The procedure helps in determining the time since death and manner of death, the cause of death, and the forensic entomology, it removes the study of life cycles of the insects uh, found near and inside the decomposed cadaver of the animals, uh, women and animals. The process of helping identification cause of death and time since death, the place of death, it is associated with the death investigation. And if skeleton is obtained, the insect analysis can reveal the body of intoxicated with the drug or the poisons. Forensic anthropology, the type of bone, you can uh, uh, identify the type of bone. It may belong to the human or the animals, the skeleton and skeleton mm -hmm. vein. For, uh, skull photo superimposition, sex, uh, sex uh, determination, age determination, ancestry and height mm -hmm. by using this technology. And forensic odontology, uh, sex and age determined by this, this technology. Forensic microbiology, forensic microbiology is a microbial evidence can found in the case of drowning death, hospitals and clinical acquired infection and sudden infant death. The microbial study can be useful in identification of the person associated with biological materials such as hair, skin, blood, saliva, urine and fecal matter. The microbial study can also be useful for determining the postmortem interval also. These are the basic forensic applications of biology. This includes the subfield and the sub-disciplines. Uh, this will include microbiology, entomology, serology, anthropology. These are the subfield of the biology. But here in Chandigarh, CFS Chandigarh, we are examining the major facilities we have is the DNA and serology and anthropology. In case uh, these, if, uh, this biological material is come from uh, biological related to the crime is related to the crime the crime scene management in the crime scene management we have uh, first we have the in case of crime scene management the transfer of exchange of material association a link with the person with crime individualization of source of the evidence identification of physiochemical nature of the evidence and re reconstruction of the crime scene by linking the sequence of the event happened and the crime scene. The issue related to the crime scene evidence during the investigation, the what are the clue material? Identify the nature of the clue material, biological, physical, and chemical. Establish the relation between the suspect and victim. The clue material related to the evidence. Maintain the chain of custody, documentation, digital recording, and authentication and integrity of the evidence sample related to the crime scene or the crime evidence. Evidence collection mainly by the police officer from the scene of crime. The police officer and crime scene investigator respond to the crime scene of crime to collect the biological evidence used in the forensic biology and DNA testing. Investigator must be careful not to contaminate these type of samples. During the sample collection, we have to understand the what 
kind of sample collected from the crime scene, the DNA sample sources, biological evidence at the crime scene, evidence collection and preservation, and collection and reference DNA samples and storage and transport of evidence samples. DNA evidence and authentication issue, blood authentication form of the victim or the cues along with attested photograph duly filled by the doctor, MLR, PMR, sexual assault form, in case of sexual assault form, these type of samples collected by the medical officer and attested by the, these document attested by the medical officer, evidence integrity. To maintain the evidence integrity, we have to dry the sample, pack the sample label and seal evidence, evidence transfer policy, storage policy, detailed documentation of the evidence, maintain the chain of custody of the evidence, sample by the investigating agency, maintain the originality of the samples, chain of custody, to maintain the chain of custody, date and time, identity of the individual who collected the samples, any person in the position of the evidence at the crime scene and during the transport, date and time, and identity of the person who submitted the evidence to the laboratory, date and time, and identity of the property and evidence custodian who accepted and received the evidence in by the analyst, or the in uh, date and time identity of the any person who evidence whom the evidence was released and who is written and returned and the unique item identification description of the uh, items and unique number identifier location of the item in the property uh, property and evidence storage room and other external locations such as court crime laboratory and or other investigating agency location where the evidence is stored date and time and the person who stored the evidence these are the chain of custody maintained by this police officer laboratory as well as the internal laboratory chain of custody also maintained collection uh, collection of evidence from the crime scene and sampling in the laboratory the sampling is a major issue in uh, during the uh, for the analysis of crime samples during the sampling using the uh, barrier clothing separation of victim evidence and accused victim uh, accused uh, accused evidence sample separation and cleaning of accumulation uh, sample collection kit using the, by using the sample collection kit prevent the smudging of other evidence and other safety measures should be used uh, The factor which affect the DNA evidence, there are several environment factors that can affect the DNA integrity, heat, sunlight, humidity, moisture, bacteria, and mold. Therefore, not all DNA samples are suitable for the DNA testing. Contamination and avoid the DNA mixture. DNA mixture create many problems in the interpretation of the results because the technology is very sensitive to pick the small amount of the DNA in the DNA profile. Therefore, the data need to vigilance and to reduce the potential contamination at the crime scene. The training module for the police officer, medical professional and forensic analysts. The first, because this uh, police officer need to uh, train in uh, for the collection and uh, preservation of the evidence sample of different kind of uh, crime, uh, crime scenes because a uh, police officer is the first respondent and they reach to the crime scene and to collect the crimes, uh, crime scene sample by the investigating officers. Maintain the chain of custody, authentication and integrity of the evidence samples, how to collect and how to preserve the DNA evidence from the crime scenes and medical officers examining the victim and accused as per the national guidelines collection and preservation the forensic dna evidence maintain the authentication and integrity of the evidence samples the forensic analyst and have a proper knowledge of biology genetics biochemistry immunology statistics and update with the new emerging technology and then advanced dna uh, advanced dna uh, technologies uh, body fluid identification, mm -hmm. DNA examination, DNA data interpretation is a big issue. Generation of the report, DNA data generation and management and ethical and ethical and privacy issue related to the examination of the DNA cases. The system packaging and storing of biological evidence is a, another area. The guidelines. Uh, 
on the packaging of different type of biological evidence, method of dry to wet, uh, drying and wet evidence, good best practice regarding to use the container in the individual atom packings, frozen uh, below the minus 10 degree centigrade, represented two to uh, two to uh, two and eight degree centigrade with less th uh, with less than 25 percent humidity, temperature controlled conditions for the evidence samples, room temperature and ambient temperature for the surrounding is controlled humidity. Because humidity is uh, controlled humidity, why we are required to control humidity? Humidity is responsible for the growth of the microorganism. So we have to control humidity and where the, we have to store the evidence samples. Different type of evidence samples require the special treatment and condition storage to prevent the deterioration, loss, theft, contamination, mishandling, and improper destructions. CFSH Chandigarh pair the guidelines for the forensic medical examination in sex assault cases and guidelines for the collection of storage and transport of crime scene DNA analysis for the IOS. These, uh, these guidelines are available on the website, on the internet, uh, everyone can access these guidelines. During the sampling, the sam during the sampling in the laboratory, we have to proper uh, uh, have a uh, facility to identify the spot. And sampling is a very important aspect because the sam from this sample we have to cal um, uh, isolate the DNA. And different type of uh, uh, analysis, forensic light sources. Forensic light sources require the extensive training and non-specific and mass reaction in certain fabrics. We use the light sources for identification, for example, UV light for the semen detection and fluorescence light for the blood detection detection by the emission of and absorption of the light and non destructive test this is the and, and this uh, test is dependent upon the circumstances also microscopic examination microscopic identified the spermatozoa and non destructives and re, uh, results are reproducible and log post different staining method we use to different staining methods and a disadvantage is required the specialized staining and uh, unuseful for the Use of spermic and victimized men and loss of samples. The chemical chlorimetry test, this is the presumptive test. The test is a rapid test and DNA is unaffected. Easy handling log cost can be used in crime scene also and non destructive test. A disadvantage is non, -specific, non human specific. Intensity of the re reaction depend upon the concentration of the biological material present on the crime scene. And the false positive reaction can also be uh, false reaction can also be with other substances. And immunological test is minimal amount of samples required, low cost, and easy training and handling and human specific identification. And this is the destructive test and uh, the hook effect and non spermic detection, like the PSA test, is a non spermic detection. You know? sensitivity affected by the many factors because it is also a concentration dependent evidence guidelines evidence recovery guidelines there is the oral cavity from if in case of we have to take the sample from the oral cavity this is the time is mentioned in the six hours in one day case is we can collect the urine sample semen sample from the body parts and the hands samples and uh, Nail clipping samples. Okay. In, uh, the duration is three uh, three day. The hair stand, semen samples, and vaginal samples and anal samples. In uh, fourth day, uh, the duration is a four day. Penile swab and scrotum sample. We can take the sample on the four day also. And deep vaginal sampling and on the ninth day, we can collect the samples from the ninth day also. These are the samples from the oral cavity in mouth in the lip in the swabbing. We can take the sample by the swabbing. Avoid the mouth wash. Uh, avoid the mouth washers. Uh, 
mouth washner and uh, one, uh, one day we use semen sample urine sample and genital tract so by taking uh, using the swabbing method and use the sterile container and sample to store in refrigerator uh, nail clipping and semen sample and vest, uh, vaginal vestibules bite marks oral contact sperm from the clitoris labia minora majora and anal rectal and pre Perineal regions and pubic hair stands, and the, by uh, taking uh, swabbing method is uh, from the contact area, penile and scrotum uh, glands and scrotum. By the swabbing techniques is used. Semen from the fornix and cervix and vagina uh, by sample taking by the swabbing techniques. Standard reference sample in DNA cases, standard reference samples will play a very important role because the DNA profile is compared with the reference sample as well as the acute sample and disease sample to establish the identity and match and relationship. That's why it's required the standard reference sample. Standard reference samples are always collected by the medical officers or maybe big victim samples or maybe disease sample or suspect sample, liquid blood samples uh, taken in the EDTA wild and dry blood samples on the filter paper, FTA card and watch piece. The reference blood samples should be taken by the medical officer blood authentication. For the authentication, authentication form filled by the medical officer along with attested photographs. RST sample, RST samples means acute sample, standard reference sample of blood sample, create the DNA profile of in case of serial offender case, produce in the investigating lease, solve the crime, exonerate the innocent, and prevent the future crimes. Use the standard evidence material and the storage facilities because we have to improve the storage facility and use the standard material. We have Detail of the parcels, maintain the origin condition of the evidence, standard material for the packing of evidence sample, proper envelope and brown packing envelope, brown shipping boxes and plastic tubes in jars, evidence sealing clips and uh, tags, biohazards, labels, plastic bags, not to depend for the storage and preservation, the proper drying and packaging of biological material in first step for the achieving the optimal preservation. Appropriate evidence storage requires the costly equipment such as the security system, environment control system, ambient temperature monitor, and dehumidifiers. The forensic evidence must be stored in the manner that ensures the integrity and maintain the, its availability throughout the criminal investigation and judicial proceedings. These are the SAC kits. The SAC kits. Uh, Use in the uh, sexual assault cases for the sample collection, and it, uh, in case of uh, sexual assault case, we require the documents. This kind of documents were uh, submitted by the forwarding agency, and this are the necessary document for the submission of the case. The forwarding letter by the SSP, uh, attested copy of FIR, brief history of the case in English and Hindi, chain of custody by the investigating also. Uh, Officer in uh, autopsy specimen and submission form, change of custody seat, specimen seal, blood sample authentication form, along with the attested photograph and filled by the medical government uh, medical officers, attested MLR, PMR, sexual assault case, uh, assault case, patient information form, and medical record of in case of abortion cases. These are the evidence samples. This is, you can see here, this is the six week. Uh, POC uh, product of conception okay. and six weeks uh, uh, fetus and is 16 week fetus, okay. eight week fetus and 16 week fetus. And this is a wrongly preserved uh, evidence sample. The scalp uh, is the hairs with the scalp of disease, this is the postpartum okay. blood sample. These are these vaginal swabs. You can see here, you can, uh, these uh, samples were not dried properly and these are, uh, look like, uh, uh, this look uh, black in colors uh, due to the microbial growth. And this evidence is completely destroyed or degraded and putrefied and we, know, we cannot get the DNA from this kind of samples. Body fluid identification is the type of biological stain Body fluid identification is a very important issue. 
uh, very important in case of DNA examination and human semen uh, confirmation by using the microscopic examination and PSA and RSV test for the human blood test and human blood confirmation origin test is a blood belong to the human or the animal, RSV test for the human blood, human saliva test, amylase test, salivate test and uh, RSID saliva flow test. The forensic analysis of the hair examination this uh, you can see here uh, this is the uh, medulla it is fragmented medulla in uh, head hairs and the beard here this is the continuous medulla and this is this is a root of the with the polymorphic enzymes we are having a polymorphic enzyme and a high amount of dna in this root area this is a continuous medulla and this is a pubic hair. There's a type of different type of medulla in hair sample in a single individual. And we can get the DNA from the hair samples. The medulla of different species. And different, this is a medulla of human hair. Human hair. You can see here, this is a deer hair. This is a uh, rapid medulla. And this is a dog hair. There's a different type of medulla in different species. The body fluid and DNA present in all type of body fluid except in the RBC. Blood in WBC, semen, saliva and urine, hair follicles, nail clippings, bone, tooth and tissues. So DNA is the same in all cells of in all individuals. DNA in same. That's why the body fluid identification is important in forensic report. If in case of a, the DNA profile generated from the blood, DNA profile generated from the seminal stain, DNA profile generated from the nail clipping and nail scrapping, DNA profile generated from the bone samples, and DNA profile generated from the sweat, DNA profile generated from the urine sample and vaginal excretion, menstrual blood. And the, this type of body fluid identification is very important in, uh, play very important role in forensic report and forensic DNA examination. Because the DNA is same in DNA profile is same in all cells, often in all individual. DNA technology is highly admissible in the court and worldwide is a uniform technology and methodology is uniform. Accuracy rate is 100% uniform, reliable and reproducible results. Variation in the population is because of the DNA and we are having a unique uh, and uh, identification because of the DNA, DNA is the blueprint of life because the DNA from the from the birth to the till death is the same. In case of sex assault cases, the big, uh, DNA play a very, very important role in the POXO cases and sexual assault cases. And the victim could be anyone and it may be any, it's belong to be any age group or it may be belong to any caste, any religion. This is the statistics of the NCRB data. Over 88 rapes takes place in, in India on an average. Conviction rate is 20, uh, approximately 28%. Crime rate of the rape case is highest in the Rajasthan followed by the Uttar Pradesh. The crime rate against the women increased in uh, approximately 7%. Can see here in this data, you can clearly see in this data, the DNA can be used in trafficking cases for identification of the missing person and missing children. And you can see here, that this is also a NCRB data, more than 600 women and 180 children are missing every day in India. The, the age group of this a rape victim as main of the age group, the 18 to 30 age group is approximately 70%. And the age group of 30 to 40% followed by this, uh, this, uh, this, and the age group 12 to 16 groups. So this is the lesser in this case. This is also an NCRB data. The DNA profile method have become more faster because of the autonomous using the uh, latest technologies and more sensitive and uh, more sensitive and robust and more user friendly since the first here here the 
course, the DNA is a complete scientific evidence. Uh, oh. According to the Mendel inheritance, Mendelian inheritance, 50% DNA comes from the mother and 50% DNA comes from the father in, in the haploid form. And the child having, uh, having the 50% DNA from the father and 50% from the mother. In case of identical twins and non-identical twins, identical twins having the same STR data because we cannot differentiate on the autosomal STR basis and non-identical twins we can differentiate on the basis of uh, STRs. The twins having a different father in biparental twins and result of two eggs and the same mother getting fertilized by the sperm from the two different men between on and second day of the part of the ovulation period, twins having the same egg and same sperms, twins having the same egg and the two sperms. These are the different situations. The forensic DNA cases analysis in the conducted in the CFL, uh, CFS of Chandigarh, the rape and sexual assault in child abuse cases, paternity, maternity, and criminal paternity, and incest paternity. Incest paternity is, is uh, involved the brother, father, mother. This uh, mentally challenged female sexual abuse cases, homicide cases, disaster subjective identification, missing, per missing person and child identification, abortion feticide, and family assault and kinship analysis. This is the nuclear DNA tapping, the, the nuclear DNA tapping, autosomal STR DNA testing. These are the 20 codes. Now is we are using the 20 code system and we, we all know we have a 23 pair of the chromosomes and one is uh, sex determining X and Y. This, uh, this, we are using the autosomal STR DNA testing. This is a highly discriminating. Y chromosome DNA testing, Y chromosome DNA testing is uh, paternal inheritance. Uh, Paternal inheritance, this is the uh, paternal inheritance, detect the male component in the mixture in gang rape cases, importance to detecting the semen donor in sexual assault mixtures, less discriminating than the standard STR technology. This is the YSTR profile, uh, YSTR profile the same in grandfather, father and the son. We can uh, detect the paternal lineage of by using the YSTR technology. XSTR testing, a very useful in complex relationship and distance relationship, half sister testing, grandparents and grandchild comparison, paternity testing, and in incest case helpful in missing and mass disaster victim identification situation in absence of reference samples. We can use uh, by using this X chromosomal STR testing. Mitochondrial DNA sequencing, mitochondrial inheritance, uh, uh, mitochondrial DNA is a maternal inheritance, less comparison than the standard STR DNA testings. Single nucleotide polymorphism, to, uh, polymorphism typing, the, it is the upcoming technology of DNA, the phenotype and biogeographic and ancestry, identify the develop the sketch of the suspect to the morphological characters, eye color and height, and by using this techno uh, technology, some other sources of, of DNA typing, this is a uh, touch DNA typing, the contact personal DNA articles have elements useful in very uh, useful in correlate the evidence, low copy number and low template DNA issues. But this, uh, touch DNA uh, typing is uh, have a very limited evidence strength because we can use only, uh, we, can, we cannot use this kind of evidence samples in criminal investigation, we can use this type of evidence sample in identification, like the missing person identification and distant disaster victim identification. And because this type of evidence sample, in my opinion and my suggestion, we cannot use it for the criminal investigation because it was easily to plant and with uh, uh, easily to plant by the any other uh, having many issues in the uh, and the evidence value is very low in case of criminal cases, evidence uh, cases, investigation. This, uh, this, uh, this is the evidence samples. This is the evidence samples about it, fetus. And DNA is the same in all type of tissue, uh, all type of tissues, blood, semen, saliva, bone, and other type of samples. The DNA is come from, accepted in the form of this. 
and we cannot differentiate like this this come from the bone this come from the and uh, tissue sample blood and semen sample and after this dna these are the steps of dna analysis no shortcut method in dna analysis we, we can we cannot generate the report without skipping any step we have to compulsion we have a compulsion to proceed all type of steps to uh, first the sampling is to identify the sample for the dna extractions and uh, for in case of sexual assault cases we have uh, we do the differential extraction separation of male and female component and after that the dna quantified by the real time pcr uh, quality and quantity of the dna is very important for the generation of the dna profile uh, after the quantification quantification and we uh, amplify the dna we can amplify the dna by using the different for example str fystr ssr xstr and mitochondrial sequencing after the quantification and then ce uh, ce on the genetic analyzer electrophoresis and uh, genotyping by using the hid software gene mapper software this is the software is the licensed software and validated software is worldwide by used by the worldwide and interpretation of the raw data and generate the dna profile generate the dna profile dna uh, and after the generate the dna profile uh, result interpretation and statistical analysis and generation of the report okay. these are the method it's, uh, we have to follow this kind of uh, all these steps we cannot skip the, all the steps uh, for the analysis dna technology str dna profiling why str str profiling dna database and do the interpretation and generation of the report for technologies uh, i already told this i did spill in the code and this is the left we have the the processing and of the of the laboratory photographs and is dna profile is unique yes in the statement we have a 20 codis loci the probability of match is one in one billion there was enough to say the one is the other at the same time it's enough to say that our profile is unique in, in this kind of uh, population specific population this is a profile, STR profile, and having a 20 codes. Um, DNA evidence matched with the reference sample. That's why a reference sample is required for the comparison of a uh, reference sample of uh, suspected mm -hmm. reference sample of the victim. If match or not match, if match is 100%, it's a copy of reference sample. Copy of, uh, is the exact copy of that. You can, um, these are the profile. DNA profile. After this analysis, the, in case of DNA report, in DNA report we have already mentioned. Uh, we, we give the opinion or conclusion. DNA conclusion included included evidence source or contributor, and excluded evidence source or contributor mixture more than one or two individual, not more than three. We cannot resolve this mixture more than three individual. Inconclusive. If the sample problem. Non availability of the reference sample of the accused of the victim, in insufficient data, low copy number, DNA issues. The comparing the electrophorograms, this is a, I am already said to the scale, the evidence sample and the reference sample exclude, exclude with no match with the evidence samples. That's why this is a reference sample is excluded on this evidence samples. Cannot be excluded is a hundred percent match. The evidence sample match with the reference sample is then we can uh, conclude this report. This is hundred percent match on the statistical basis of the report. Statistics do not lie because we are using in the evidence the frequency of the alleles for the calculation of the statistics. Single source statistics, random match probability, random match man not to be excluded. In case of statistical uh, estimate the rule, single source samples, yeah, you are using the, the, this is a heterozygous locus. You can see here heterozygous locus is here is a homozygous locus. This uh, 
two PQ and PQ uh, scale is you can see we can use this uh, allele frequency allele frequency in this and finally we can put the one in six hundred eight quintillion this is enough to say this profile is unique in per population and evidence and missing person identification identification identified at body identification of unclaimed dead bodies the the DNA database or the missing person database for the identification of the individual DNA evidence and crime solving in India an unprivileged teenager and three victim are very common problem generally abortion is a final solution to close the case in case of if the case is coming to the right the police actively search the aborted fetus to identify the rapist. Abortion fetus used to curse the rapist and clinically handed over to the evidence for the in, by using the DNA technology. This is the honor killing is a very mm -hmm. common in India. Intercaste marriage is an issue that and the case reported by the uh, by her husband identification of disease is a major issue. More than one crimination of the dead body on the same it place is it create the problem because we cannot get the complete profile we can we get the mixture profile because the combination we have uh, in a day uh, one to two bodies and the same place then they, they, they are the mixing of bones and ashes are very common this will have uh, the sampling is very crucial at this kind of samples we get the uh, profile like a mixture profile. We cannot conclude that kind of profile and could not identify the disease by this kind of uh, in cases. This is a very uh, major problem in that kind of cases. Okay. This is a 60, uh, 65 year old lady who was raped in uh, Srinagar. Where is early uh, born about the old days were forcibly uh, taken by the down in the bushes and brutally raped by the three men. The sample was received in the laboratory, was close and victim during the time of assault. The hair samples, soil samples, grass samples, so the crime scene, along with the reference sample sample of the three accused. The DNA revealed the presence of semen mixed from the fecal matter on the cloth and presence of the blood on the soil and grass samples. The semen sample of the male profile recovered from these exhibit matched with the two accused by using the high-end high DNA technology. This is the type of the case. The three men killed in the Shropian, and this is a case from the army. The major controversy is a family member of three laborers from the Rajori district in JNK allies that the unidentified militant killed in the encounter in the shopping by the security forces were actually their relative and they were innocent. The tissue and hair samples were saved for the dead body along with the reference samples from the allies parents and kids were released, uh, received from the paternal identification and established the relationship between the examination revealed that the identification of three individuals and proved the relationship between allies king statistical analysis were done to confirm the relationship between the three individuals and their families. The, fam the case became national headlights and was covered by the media in large scales. And this uh, disease were identified and by the uh, identified. This is a case from insist. This is the insist case. Insist case is very common in the domestic violence. And the humiliation of him, 70 year old boy, and constantly raping the 15 year old younger sister. The girl was alone in the house, and her mother was died, and father was meant to work. And brother took advantage of the circumstances and sexually assaulted his sister, resulting the sister, sister become pregnant. This girl was 16, uh, 14 weeks pregnant. When he received the case at the Seaf Chandiga, the male aborted fetus preserving saline was received for establishing the paternity according to the DNA analysis. The girl fetus was fathered by the own brother and the result of YSTR corroborated the results of autosomal STRs because the YSTR and brother STRs are the similar and father YSTR it is similar because inherited to the brother and inherited to the fetus.
This is a sexual assault case of mentally challenged girl. In case, this is a case from Arunachal Pradesh. Uh, this uh, sexually assault child is a one of the most heinous crime, and appealing the violation of her innocence. The is an event of brutal mankind. The 16-year-old mentally challenged mute girl was sexually assaulted by her stepfather in prison in absence in the absence and presence mm -hmm. and in knowledge of their mother. The girl was brutally raped and repeatedly with the results in her pregnancy. What hurt the most of the fact the same offender raped the minor girls, impregnated her again while on the bail. If he is on the bail, again he is, she was pregnant. The body part of the buttock of the fetus was received, preserved in the saline and was analyzed. The sample was subjected to the paternity testing and forensic DNA STR typing. The case was successfully analyzed. Analyzed and the paternity mm -hmm. of accused was established by using the autosomal and YSTR. This girl was pregnant two times. One, the first, and the second, he was in the bay. Mm -hmm. This is the evidence samples from the Uttaranchal case. This is the case of Uttaranchal. You can see here, this is the reference sample of the victim. Mm -hmm. And you can send this kind of sample. This is a vaginal swab. Vision swab is preserved in the saline. This is not suitable for the DNA analysis. And we cannot get the uh, results from this kind of samples. And uh, this is a, another case. This is a case from the Nishan Singh from the Punjab. It's a very highlighted case. This couple is um, uh, uh, from the Goa. And mm -hmm. you can see here, this is the container. This is the container and blood from uh, reaching out from the evidence clothes. And but container is empty, mm -hmm. do not have any aborted fetus. And we have just said the uh, committee and to identify that then uh, this is the evidence uh, destruction by the uh, uh, investigating agencies and including uh, maybe I, I, can, I not, cannot comment on the medical official also, but we cannot get the evidence sample for the identification of the paternity of the aborted fetus. Mm -hmm. In uh, criminal cases, the criminal, uh, this is a, another case of this uh, uterine wall with the fetus. In, in the, this uh, problem is arrived when the fetus is very small and less than eight weeks. When uh, the fetus, aborted fetus, come along with the mass of tissues of the mother, and this is the uterine wall with the fetus removed by the ward of doctor. Uterine wall preserving the chemical preservative, and that is the common. Very difficult to identify the aborted fetus because they're very small in size. Uh, after the long exercise and careful decision, the tissue was taken out by assuming, uh, assuming that is the fetus. In the DNA profile of the fetus, we get the male DNA profile successful, and the criminal paternity of uh, that confirmed. This is a very common problem. In this case from the army, this is a Noiva Maternity 2012 case, in case this is an attempt to rape case, and the violence broke out in 10, uh, May 10 to 2012. Is a 226 field uh, artillery regiment at the Mohawk field firing range of the Mohawk in Western Ladakh. The incident took place after the Jawan became furious and the fellow soldier allies with being thrashed by the young officer misbehaved with the with a major wife and the incident fighting ripped between the officer and Jawan. This is a very highlighted case in the defense ministry and this is a case was solved by because evidence cloth of the bleeding of the lady was sent to the CFC Chandigarh for the DNA matching and the DNA was matched with the accused and as well as the victim. And mixture profile, we can get the victim profile. The victim lady and shank was used to exclude, use, uh, cannot be excluded on the mixture profile obtained by from the evidence samples. This is a 10 year old rape case of the Chandigarh. The CFC Chandigarh report has given a uh, new turn to this ongoing investigation, cats a real carpet in this case. Because the first we have received the evidence sam uh, reference samples of baby girl and his child uh, is her child and accused, but they were, uh, the accused was excluded 
because he is not in the father of the child and the case was reinvestigated as it was said by the high court this case was monitored by the supreme court for the reinvestigation providing the justice for the minor girl on this time the child child yeah, child having case is very common in cases uh, related to the gender selection is the case from the panipat the cfj chandigarh dna profile result had the identification of the biological parent pregnant in the cases in is in this case uh, uh, there is uh, reference the uh, mother of this uh, girl mother of the girls have name is kavita and he delivered a baby girl she delivered a baby girl but uh, at the time of delivery in the hospital the kavita named coincidentally who delivered the baby in the same date three kavitas having in this uh, you can see here this is the one october 2020 so cbj and they revealed that the real parent of the baby of khushi among the three mothers having a similar name coincidentally kavita who have delivered the baby on the same day the rajveer and grandfather of the khushi said that the dna report had cleared all the uh, confusions and the family then happily accepted the baby khushi it was a misunderstanding created by the hospitals stories and packaging this is the stories and packaging guidelines for the different type of biological samples meant in already told you this This is this is case. This is a case of Rambal. This is a fire incident from the JNK case, in which this uh, identification of nine disease. This is beyond the identification, and they were identified by using the DNA technology. This is a case of mentally challenged sexual assault cases. This is a case from the Kanu rape and uh, Rape and paternity identification. This uh, uh, victim is mentally sixty percent mentally challenged. Who raped by three youth and left pregnant. Who later gave the birth of male child. The suspect male reference samples was subjected to DNA testing established in the paternity of cases. In case of mentally retarded, mentally retarded child or the female or the in case of. Uh, child uh, abuse cases that below the age of 10 10 dna play very important role for the identification of the accused because dna uh, speaks loudly for the identification of the accused and sample collection is uh, very important and carefully uh, collected the sample and identify the sample and to collect the uh, send the uh, laboratory for the identification of the case because uh, mentally challenged as uh, sexual assault cases the victim cannot uh, not able to identify the accused not able to give the uh, proper witness uh, the not uh, not able to explain the incident of the rape or the, that kind of incident therefore the most of this kind of some cases uh, depend upon the uh, dna examinations and uh, this time uh, the common problem is mentally disturbed victims are not able to explain the incident and identity of the suspect he is not able to identify the suspect also and determine the decision was all the most pending of the dna report and that we have uh, we have uh, gone through most uh, almost uh, Hundred more than hundred cases of mentally challenged cases, and the same problem is here because DNA is a very crucial evidence in this kind of uh, this kind of uh, this type of uh, cases. This is a double murder case. This is a double murder case. We can identify this DNA profiling and multiple spots play very crucial role for the identification of the accused samples. Uh, Then, then we have this match with the cue samples and the lady sir this is a late uh, another case this lady servant uh, hired for the surrogacy was raped by the both father and mother duo dna play important role in highlight for the accused and this is a case from the utranchal utranchal is a uh, sexual assaulted by the father and because of which we she got the pregnant and let him so uh, 
let on uh, on so the dna play important role role in magnet for the clues the double murder case this is type of murder case you can see here yeah, this is a clotted blood uh, decompose, uh, completely degraded and decompose. You can get the DNA profile, this kind of sample, but you can get, uh, but we can get the DNA profile, complete DNA profile, this kind of stain because it's a complete preserve automatically and uh, dry and preserve. You can see here, this is a streak of line. Now uh, you can get the DNA profile from this, the mixture DNA profile of this, cues and sis, you know, victim sister. And you can uh, here you can see here this is a minute tiny stain of blood. You can get the mixture DNA profile of cues as well as the victim. Also, this is a murder weapon used by the accused. And This is another case. I examined the highlighted case. This is a case from the Patel court. This case. We are visited on this crime scene. We were visited on this crime scene. The militants and uh, visited on the crime scene. And the, this is a vehicle used by the militants. And uh, we examined this uh, vehicle. And we get this uh, uh, blood stain from the vehicles as well as the red blue cans. You can say the second vehicle is a mirror. It's a Dutch DNA swab lifting from the empty blue can. And here, this is the dead body number three. Better than this, you can see here the red blue cans. We can take the swab. I am here. We are here. I am using this Dutch DNA technology, the saliva from this uh, Red Bull cans and other materials to identify this and to link with the events of the crime scene with the militant. You can see here is the blood stain. DNA profile matches with the Rajesh Mamu and single DNA profile matches with the Red Bull cans. And you can see the burn uh, remains, burn remains, human burn remains. You can see here, this is a bone, completely charred and shrimp in the form of a bone bone. See here, this is a murder weapon used by the militants. So the mixture DNA profile, the mixture DNA profile from the Sikagar Singh and Rajesh Bama from the dragon handle. This is a dragon handle. We can get the mixture DNA profile from these two individuals. And dragon cover, dagger cover, this is a cover of the dagger. And we can get the DNA profile of the dead body number three of the militant. And uh, these are the clothing of the uh, deceased Ikaga Singh, who was driving the car in initially, the, then stained with blood spot and put a cover from this and the stain from the stand written from the Innova car, you know, uh, and stain uh, lifted from the, the car. And this matches with the dead body number two of the patent. And you can see here DNA technology has a very uniform, all over the world, robust, reliable, reproducible. And uh, most of the country has a sign with MAU the interval for the DNA database mm -hmm. and most uh, victim disaster identification, missing children, and personal identification. And if we have a database, DNA data bill is still pending in India, and uh, we are hoping soon the DNA bill will come. Because uh, if we have a DNA data bill and we have a database, and DNA database is the answer of all the crime, we can solve the crime and reduce the crime and exonerate the innocents, and solve the social problems also, yeah. increase the conviction rate by using the DNA technology in case of identification, in support sexual assault cases, criminal fatality cases, and, uh, and identification cases. 
there is an urgent need for the medical uh, urgent forensic medical examination and uniform guideline all over the India for the uniformity we have to uh, issue the guideline and uh, national guidelines on the management of the sexual violence in India national funding for providing the rape kit for the each hospital national training program for the medical officers and senior nurses sensitization of the investigation officers training and handling the sample collection and preservation because the dna technology is very sensitive uh, the contamination and uh, mishandling is a major issue while during the uh, collection of the sample and preservation of the samples thanks The technical you, words only made us understand, ma'am, how difficult it is your job is. It was Greek and Latin for us. At some point of time, the technicalities which are involved, we understand the challenges which you will face when you really do it. Because you are an expert, it feels very easy for you. But we are only law people and we the method which you adopt, the difficulties and challenges. We do yes, understand and appreciate the efforts which you all put in, ma'am. Uh, there, there are a few questions I hope you'll be ready to take. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. This mobilization keeping body sample in plastic can preserve evidence for a long time. Some further chemical need to spray while collecting these samples. Can we preserve the evidence? First, mummification of keeping the body. Does mummification of keeping the body? You, uh, we have all most of the literature available on the net. The DNA uh, revealing the identity of the mummy's body uh, by uh, using the DNA technology and. It, uh, Using the DNA, uh, DNA, you can isolate and generate the DNA profile from the mummified body and keeping the body uh, because DNA automatically preserves in these cases. The sample in the plastic can preserve evidence for the long time? No. We are not recommending the plastic to preserve the evidence and uh, evidence samples. We recommended this, we use the paper bag, cardboards, and uh, in case of wet sample. In case of wet sample, I'm saying here in, because the plastic uh, generate the most of moisture and humidity in because we have the, in, in India we have a uh, four type of climates you know, climate changes and the uh, raining season, winter season, and uh, summer season is autumn season. There is climate changes because uh, humidity is a major cause of deterioration of the evidence samples and the plastic uh, is a very um, uh, plastic and polythene give the proper condition to uh, grow this uh, uh, moist the samples and other the further chemical need to spray while collecting these samples further chemicals need to spray no no need to spray the chemical on the collecting these samples. No need to spray any chemicals because it uh, will hinder the DNA analysis. For which part of the body is not possible to collect the DNA? Which From which part of the body? It, it is not possible to collect the DNA. I think, in my opinion, we can uh, extract the DNA, any sample, any part of the samples. Even we uh, we are uh, we can get the DNA from the harsh hair shaft also. Nail nail clipping is a good source of the DNA. Ear wax is a good source of the uh, DNA. Nasal secretion is a good source of DNA. But it depends upon the number of cells on the DNA. On the in RBC we can uh, already I'm telling you here the R RBC uh, having no nucleus because RBC doesn't have a DNA. Can age can be determined by the DNA? No. Age cannot be determined by the DNA analysis. 
DNL age is only determined by the anthropological studies, anthropological and morphological studies, and um, uh, odontology by using the methods. And uh, DNA, we cannot determine the age by the, using the DNA technology. How can consider? How we can consider what is the evidentiary value in the different opinion on two different DNA analysis experts with regard to the paternity issue? For example, received from the same source. Can consider what is evidentiary value. Okay, different opinion. The different DNA. If the sample is same. If the sample is same in the case of this, with regard to the paternity issue, for the same uh, for the sample to see from the same source, no, it's not possible. It's not possible. DNA technology is a uniform worldwide. It's not possible. It may be depend upon the what method uh, is. Uh, I think uh, if, if I am using the 20 STRs, uh, 24 STR, or maybe you know, 20, uh, 27 STR for analysis of the paternity cases, it, uh, the chances of sample change is more uh, common. But if in case of same, same source, I cannot say that the ki, uh, uh, report and opinion is different. Opinion will be the same. Is any case the identical twins have the same DNA in the fingerprints? It's called the difficulties finding in the cues. Uh, identical twins, STR technology, at present STR technology, we cannot differentiate the identical twins on the basis of DNA technology. But if we are, if we are doing the NGS, next generation sequencing, SNPs, we can differentiate the twins, identical twins. And the fingerprints cause the difficulty. Yes, fingerprint absolutely cause because we don't have a, a proper data, and uh, we, uh, fingerprints can alter as uh, during the time of uh, sample collection or the sampling. So it may be fingerprints may cause the difficulty for the finding the suspect. But in case of identical twins, uh, STR analysis during the uh, due to the by autosomal STR analysis, we cannot identify the identical twins, but by using the NGS technology, we can identify the identical twins by SNP method. In sexual cases, many times, many a times, the victim does not inform immediately to the family of the police in the result missing the fingerprints or any sample in crime scene, unknown assaulters, what is on this opinion? In sexual cases, many times the victim does not inform immediately to the person observed in the same. Ma'am, the meaning may be if I interpret it rightly, whatever I can understand, Sunita, ma'am. I yes. think the participant is asking most of the times the victim could have watched, they must have uh, completed two to three days, they must have hesitated to tell their parents. And then it will obviously lead to missing of evidences. Uh, any external material, fingerprints, I think that is the meaning of uh, the question, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we are facing the, this same problem in many of cases, in sexual assault cases. But in this case, we can go for the trial. We cannot case and say that directly, no, uh, we cannot get the profile from this kind of sample. But we can, in some cases, we get the profile on this kind of, uh, in this type of cases. Uh, but it depends upon the circumstances, how many times she, she take baths and how many times she go for the changes in the clothes and incident clothes, uh, or if the incident clothes or the change clothes are required, um, the incident clothes play an important role and the incident clothes are washed, well. then we will also try on these clothes of the uh, victim. And, uh, but we cannot say completely no in this type of cases. If the duration is long, two months, three months, then it's very difficult. Then we can say ki, no, no, kuch nahi aega isme, because the duration is very long. If the duration is within a week, three day, four day, we can, we can go for the trial. We can examine this, this kind of cases, but we can get the success in some of the cases. 
it's not we can say not no, we, we cannot say 100% ki we, we, uh, we cannot get anything from this kind of cases but we can uh, in some cases we get the profile and we get the identify the accused also thank you ma'am welcome today sessions ma'am we are thankful to hug sir please kind us for having this special uh, chandigarh thank you so much to the institution ma'am thank you so much thank you yes ma'am and also thank you for caring to explain the doubts as lucid and as clear as possible thank you ma'am and uh, with uh, all the pleasure we have uh, successfully completed the morning session of dsnlu's day 2 virtual workshop on forensic science and its evidentiary value we will be continuing the afternoon session with a short uh, lunch break from uh, 1:30 to 1:50 pm so all the attendees we request your presence briefly after 30 minutes thank you everyone have a nice day we'll start the sessions exactly with time schedule thank you so much
Are we ready for the afternoon session? Host? Yes, ma'am, we are ready. Okay, Vita. You have just one minute to start. Good afternoon, Mishra, sir. Oh, sure, ma'am. Good afternoon to resource persons, dignitaries, and the participants. I take the pleasure in welcome you all to the post lunch sessions of day two technical sessions, technical session nine and ten. Be it civil or criminal matter, question documents is highly significant and it is an highly significant area of forensic science. I request Ms. Geetika to introduce our resource person for technical. Technical session nine, Dr. V. C. Mishra, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Rachma. A very good afternoon, one and all. I'm elated to take an opportunity to introduce our guest for technical session nine, Dr. V. C. Mishra, Associate Professor, Amity University, Noida. Sir got his Doctor of Philosophy in Forensic Science with specialization in question document from AIFS Amity University in Noida in the year 2015. Having a vast professional experience of 32 years in solving a large number of court cases, he has also given expert opinion at the Court of Law in Indian High Courts, High Court of London, UK and Kuala Lumpur Court in many cases. Dr. V.C. Mishra has submitted opinion for a number of establishments like Indian Army, Indian Air Force, KPMG, Castrol, Bank of Tokyo, SBI, PNB, LIC, Southern India Regional Council of Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, CCH, etc. With a very successful professional career, Dr. V.C. Mishra spent teaching his expertise for 18 years till date and supervising research work and research projects for postgraduate students in various aspects of forensic science. As an associate professor in forensic science at Amity University, especially in the field of question document analysis, handwriting and signature identification, disguised handwriting, fingerprints, crime scene, forensic photography. Dr. V.C. Mishra is a founder faculty of Forensic Science Department in 2002. Apart from his professional and academic roles, Dr. V.C. Mishra has many other roles to play in his career. He worked as an editor in Amity Journal of Behavioral and Forensic Sciences. He delivered lectures on various aspects of forensic science to army, military, bank, court professionals, and corporates at Delhi University, Rajdhani College, Ramjas College, St. Xavier's College, Bits Pilani, etc. He is a member of the recruitment committee for the faculties, examiner and evaluator in the panel of paper setters of the university. Dr. V.C. Mishra was appointed by NABL. Commissioner Handwriting Expert to submit document expert opinion in Mysore court. Dr. V.C. Mishra also had many papers published and attended various workshops and seminars. We're privileged to have you as a resource person for this workshop, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Geetika. Now I would like to call Ms. Tejasvi to introduce our guest, uh, Mr. Manas Mishra. Hello. Uh, we can start, Peter. Rachna, if Tejaswini is little late, ready late, we'll start with sir. We'll start the sure, session. Sure, sure ma'am. We'll tell you to introduce later. No issues with that. Sure, ma'am. Because we're having a lunch. Okay. We are very honored to have you, sir, Dr. V. C. Mishra, sir. Over to you. You can start with the technical session. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Uh, 
good afternoon to all participants and dr vc mishra can can you hear her hear me yes sir we can hear you we can hear you okay sir we are not able to see you because there is no bandwidth on our side we can hear you sir okay, okay thank you madam हेलो हाँ सर शुरू कर सकते हैं सर आप ओके मैडम ओके सर आई एम डॉक्टर वी सी मिश्रा गुड आफ्टरनून टू एवरीबडी टुडे आई वुड स्पीक समथिंग अबाउट द फिंगरप्रिंट आइडेंटिफिकेशन साइन इट इंक्लूड्स द कंपेरिजन ऑफ द थम इंप्रेशन impressed by the inks on the documents so for the lawyer i would speak something that uh, when they go to the court to introduce uh, fingerprint expert or to cross examine the expert uh, opposite side cross uh, expert then what knowledge they must have because in this one hour uh, session it is not possible to give all the details of uh, classification of fingerprint and all for the lawyers learned lawyers and students of the law i would say something about how the how they would be able to see the authenticity of their clients suppose a client comes to a lawyer with some documentation having some uh, Some impressions on a will or registered agreement or any document, then what they must know about the thumb impression and fingerprints. The lawyer must have a magnifying glass and scale with him, and he can see whether the documents have some thumb impression and those thumb impressions are uh, genuine or not, because some clients claims that this is the actual thumb impression of. Uh, the person who made this will but in fact it is not a genuine thumb impression so pre trial preparation is very important and lawyers must see the documents uh, themselves for uh, to identify a thumb impression whether it is found matching with the specimen thumb impression of that person or not they should see the pattern area there are many patterns of fingerprint like arch pattern it is plain arch and tented arch number 2 is the loop pattern which can be a radial loop or ulnar loop it can be a whorl pattern rounded rounded pattern whorl pattern that uh, may be a inner whorl meeting whorl and outer whorl then they, uh, they can see the pattern may be double loop either it is a twinned loop or it is a lit lateral pocket loop so basic idea of having the knowledge of the pattern a lawyer can get all the information regarding the genuineness and otherwise of the documents today i will start with the patterns of the fingerprints it is well known all over the world that every person has a unique fingerprint no two person can have the same fingerprint identical fingerprint it is very unique and very perfect science in the forensic science field mostly the patterns are found which are loop patterns it can be a radial loop and it can be a ulnar loop in those those uh, in these two types of fingerprint ulnar and radial loops uh, mostly ulnar loops are found sometimes you see there are circular formation rounded formation whorl like formation uh, in the central part of the thumb impression they are called as whorl pattern so mostly whorl and loop patterns are found 
in some cases there may be a pattern that is called as a double loop double loop means one loop is overlapping on another loop in the united states it is called double loop but in india we mostly uh, call it as lateral pocket loop and twin loop it depends on the opening loop uh, opening uh, line of the core core line is opening towards which side it will decide whether it is it is a twin loop or it is a lateral pocket loop then comes the uh, central pocket loop central pocket loop is a pattern where two or three digits are found circular in the uh, pattern area and they are again covered by the loops so that is also known as the uh, peacock's eye now i will tell you something about the accidental loop what is accidental loop it is very rare it is accidentally found and it can have the pattern a mixed pattern of two or three pattern like loop is also found world is also there so uh, accidentally it is found it is very rare so most of the time we uh, come across with the two patterns that is loop and world one must know that fingerprints are always unique and they remain same throughout the life since from the childhood up to the de uh, uh, decomposition of the body after death it never changes these are found always uh, similar and they never change in the course of the life of a person sometimes uh, when a person is dead people try to take the thumb impression after death but those fingerprints and thumb impression uh, will show Uh, because sweat sweat pores are uh, not working there is no sweat uh, narrow uh, fingerprints so one can identify if this thumb impression was taken after the person was dead so in the court of law you have to see if the if there is some pressure on the paper and it is uh, visible on the back surface of the paper and even paper it could be a case of uh, taking thumb impression after the death so lawyer must know that when a document is presented into the court of law by their side or by opposite side they must check the fingerprints first if they found that both the Uh, specimen as well as disputed are showing the similar pattern circular pattern it is a world then they can see whether the digits are found matching sequence or digits are found matching uh, or not so some knowledge will be very helpful for them now if they want to bring their own expert they are going to produce their fingerprint expert to prove any document as a genuine but they must know about that how to present the fingerprint expert engaged by the lawyer for the examination in chief so be sure that your fingerprint expert has given the proper photographic demonstration there uh, must be two equal size photograph in lazment Uh, one of uh, the disputed uh, thumb impression and one of the specimen thumb impression and left thumb impression uh, should be compared with the left specimen and right spe specimen both because sometimes by mistake people put their right hand so in india what happens most of the times uh, left hand thumb impression is taken uh, from the male and the right hand thumb impression is taken from the females so the apex of the fingerprint apex means the upper side part of the uh, fingerprint uh, can uh, show that it is belonging from left hand or right hand if the apex portion is showing the slanting ridges to, uh, towards the left side then it is a left thumb impression or left fingerprint and if the apex uh, ridges are showing the downward 
flow of the ridges towards the right hand side, one can say that it belongs to the right some impression. Sometimes people do not write whether it is LTI or it is RTI. So it, it is better to write the LTI and RTI when taking the specimen of a person for the comparison of the disputed fingerprint or thumb impression. Number two, expert while preparing his opinion must ensure that minimum eight to two, 10 of these characteristics are found matching if he has given the opinion of identical thumb impressions. So eight to 10 clear these characteristics must be shown to the court of law what, uh, with the help of drawing the red arrow marks. Uh, can you see this photograph which is displayed on this screen? Here are two thumb impressions. One left side thumb impression is the loop type. You can see there is a loop formation in one thumb impression and the opening of the loop is towards the left hand side. Second, at the right side, there is a thumb impression which is a whirl type because circular ridges are uh, present in the central portion. So, if such kind of uh, two uh, thumb impressions are impressed on the paper, one can say that it is non identical. Why it is non identical? Because there is a difference of pattern. One is of loop pattern, and next is, uh, is a whirl pattern. So difference of pattern is a fundamental difference. Now, if the difference in the pattern is established, there is no need of uh, comparing the ridge characteristics further. It can be decided that, finally con uh, opined that these two thumb impressions are non-identical. Now, if the two thumb impressions are found of, uh, of the same pattern, like both are world pattern, then we can go ahead. Collision of these characteristics. At least 10 to 10, 12 these characteristics must be um, shown as identical. So the, this uh, precaution must be taken by the lawyers when they are presenting the fingerprint expert in the court. Now, suppose a lawyer is going to cross-examine the expert produced by the opposite side. So how he should uh, uh, start to cross-examine, which are the best questions uh, for the cross-examination to test his knowledge and to see if there is any lacuna in his opinion. Suppose a opposite side fingerprint expert uh, has been produced by the court and uh, by the defendant and the lawyer of the plaintiff is going to cross-examine him. First of all, the lawyer must ask question that what is his qualification, what is his uh, experience, and where from he has got these two thumb impressions, whether the photographs were taken properly, whether the enlargement of both the prints is on the same scale. So these things must be ascertained to uh, prove that the opposite side expert has given the right thing or wrong thing. And the directions of the north, the north, south, east, west must be shown by the expert. So these are the things which are very important uh, for the fingerprint expert to write in his opinion. Now, the cross-examining lawyer must see whether the fingerprint expert has drawn the red arrow marks properly on the ridge collector or not. In this picture, which, which is displayed on this uh, screen, this shows that the uh, core and delta uh, are shown on the, uh, with the help of the red lines, which is very clear. Sometimes, Dishonest expert, they put the red arrow mark on the on a white space where there is no any ridge and no core, core and no delta. So that kind of uh, opinion 
is going to be proved as incomplete opinion and deceptive opinion. So uh, uh, we have uh, we, we feel that if all the lawyers must be having basic knowledge of the comparison of the fingerprint, then they will be benefited a lot, and and uh, and they can trust their client. They can uh, prove that uh, the opinion given by the opposite side lawyer is not acceptable because of the lacuna, uh, with uh, because the expert has not properly. Uh, uh, taken any precaution and proper uh, demonstration of the risk vectors are not given. The size of the fingerprints were different. So these are the important things for lawyer. Now, I would tell you something about the use of this uh, fingerprint science because it is useful for the cross examination and it is very useful for the pre trial preparation. If the documentation is checked and every document so the uh, the claim of the client is correct as per the fingerprint and doc signature and whatever, then the, that would be good for the client uh, for the lawyer to know this client is honest. He is telling us all the uh, right thing honestly. So what happened? So I, I would like to say that I was talking about right now, I was talking about the thumb impression impressed with the ink on the documents. Sometimes what happens in cases of homicide, when there is a suspicion of the suicide or suspicion of the murder, some letter was found on the crime scene uh, and people claim that it is a suicidal note written by that man or woman. So it becomes very essential for the investigating agencies and the government forensic laboratories to look for certain invisible fingerprints, latent fingerprints. What are the latent fingerprints? Latent fingerprints are those prints which are impressed on some spongy surfaces uh, in the, with the help of the sweat of the uh, man or woman, sweat prints. Uh, that, that is sweat, and that sweat is printed in the same shape of the ridge character. So it is not visible to the naked eye. It can be made visible uh, with the help of the ninhydrin test. Ninhydrin is a chemical which when mixed with the acetone, a 5% ninhydrin solution can be made. <coughs> and after heating it up to the 80 degrees centigrade, the fingerprint is developed after the application of the ninhydrin on the paper. But it is slightly destructive kind of test. It can destroy the paper, it can wash out the ink. <coughs> but I have seen myself in the CFSL that a uh, fingerprint expert was developing the suicidal fingerprints on the suicidal note. I, I told him, sir, when he, why you are applying this chemical, it will destroy the document. He said, we have taken all the photograph prior to the application of this chemical on this print because we want to know whether, if, whether there is a fingerprint impressed on this uh, paper suicidal note, uh, which will be compared with the fingerprints of the dead body. If the suicidal note is genuine, there are chances that fingerprint would be available on the suicidal note and that can be compared with the specimen taken from the dead body. So it can be uh, doubly uh, make sure that this suicidal note is a genuine suicidal note and besides that handwriting expert also compare the writings so one document can be proved as doubly genuine when the fingerprint is also compared and the handwriting is also compared and if signature is there signature is also compared i would like to tell you one thing most of the people do not know 
that when they touch any document, any plain white document or paper, they leave their fingerprint as a flat print on that paper, but it is not visible to the eye. And if application of the NIN hardening will be made, it can be developed even after four or five years. Because the amino acid of the sweat, sodium chloride of the sweat will be uh, inserted into the sizing and thickness of the paper, and it will remain intact for a very long time. So this knowledge is very essential uh, that uh, fingerprints can be developed on the paper. And very uh, surprisingly, such fingerprint development can only be made on the spongy surface. Paper is spongy surface. It absorbs the sweat inside. So if somebody touch, uh, touches the paper, it will be there for five to 10 years and maybe more. <clears throat> So to prove any document is authentic and genuine, such kind of comparison of the latent fingerprint and the writing comparison, signature comparison is very, very helpful to reach at the truth. Now, I would some, tell something about the threatening letter, anonymous letter, abusive letter, uh, sometimes such kind of letters are found in families uh, because of many regions, jealousy. The purpose of defending a person. The, what precaution must be taken if such kind of anonymous threatening letter is this to a person? I will say that if any letter reaches to somebody, it is uh, sometimes in a envelope. So one must open such kind of letter with all precaution that it should not be touched by the person who- Mishra sir, Mishra sir. Yes, madam. Sir, sorry to interrupt. See, uh, sir, you yes. device mein hum, aapko dekh nahi sakte, sir. Manas Mishra sir ne abhi phone karke bataya ki aur they will log into another system because there is some technical with the error with ah, the camera. Let me, let me, okay, camera. Yes yeah, sir, hum dek nahi pa rahe aapko. Oh ho. Oh. Isi liye sir, he is, he is logging into another system. You can continue with the other system also sir. Okay. Please sir, sorry to trouble you. No, 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 no madam, you, you are doing rightful thing. Ah, sir, you will see happy to see everyone. No, no, that's right. I did not want to disturb you, but Manas sir called and no, told no. me that there is some technical error. Yes, sir, let's see what you see. no problem, sir. One minute, you sir. can log in again. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, my son is helping me. Just yes, sir, wait. yes, sir. Let him, let him, let him. No issues. Participants kindly uh, bear with us for one or two minutes. They will again log into another system. There is some pro problem with their camera. Kindly excuse, excuse us for this one minute uh, disturbance.
yes participants can you uh, instead of keeping you your mind vacant for few minutes can i just you can answer me in the chat box i hope you are uh, learning and understanding the subject if i hope if anybody is from law background you will understand the value of evidence which has to be put forth in the court of law and if you are from other subjects we'll be very happy to take insights from you is there anybody who can put up in the chat box that uh, uh, are the sessions uh, actually useful to uh, both bridging the gap between practice and uh, theory all of you complain that uh, law teachers can't teach uh, all this we certainly can't teach all this but uh, i think the forensic science uh, workshop is going on well with all of you yes yes thank you yes is there anything which we can actually take uh, insights from you my dear friends you can tell me just put up anything yeah we have tried to bring the best of the people in india together under one platform uh, i think uh, they'll be back yes manas mishra sir is back and i hope uh, sir also will be back yes we you can give your feedback and uh, we'll we'll try to improve or whatever we can do to the best of our ability our center works basically for the purpose of bringing up uh, um uh, the learning capacity from all all sides it's not only law we want a mixture and an interdisciplinary or a multidisciplinary understanding of how it will useful thank you so much all of you yeah i think that is what encourages us to do a lot of work and we we'll take our team is really working hard day and night to bring things on place and um, i think it's more than one one and a half months that we have planned this and uh, we are trying to execute it i hope we have uh, made some efforts in uh, making uh, yeah it's it's thank you so much all of you yes thank you thank you yeah we do have a crime scene investigation uh, uh, we basically in uh, first we started the our very popular uh, uh, event which we conduct from lic is crime scene investigation uh, and the other one we have conducted tried once is civil trial advocacy and criminal trial advocacy my dear friends and last time we had the evidentiary value that is completely on how the courts appreciate evidence last workshop was on that it was a one day workshop so we wanted to continue in the uh, line of um, this kind of practical session so that it could be of great use to all of you who would like to practice law or even if you are on the other side of the subject matter then also we would like to. uh that's okay so if you have learned from anywhere either youtube or anything we are very glad um uh, yes we will be very happy to serve you if you can give insights that what kind of other programs may be of great help to you related to law something it should be connected to law we'll be very happy because we are a law university in rss manas mishra sir ready ho gaya sir ka mishra sir mishra sir
ओके सर थैंक यू सो मच अभी ज्वाइन हो गए सर सर लेट मी सी लेट मी सी लेट मी कंफर्म दैट आई कैन सी सर वेटिंग फॉर बेसिकली फॉर योर सेशंस हाँ मिश्र साहब नो सर यू यू आर नॉट येट विजिबल टू अस हाँ सर नो मैडम अभी भी नहीं सर अब यस सर नाउ वी कैन सी यू नाउ वी कैन सी यू सर सो वेरी सॉरी ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट्स प्लीज नो 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 प्रॉब्लम प्रॉब्लम सर एक्चुअली सम प्रॉब्लम विच वी डोंट नो ओके हाँ तो आई वाज नाउ प्लीज मैडम टेल मी इमीडिएटली इफ इट इज स्टॉप्स अगेन हेलो हाँ सर बोल देंगे बोल देंगे अच्छा अभी आपको विजिबल है इट इज विजिबल हां सर विजिबल है आप विजिबल है सर वेरी सॉरी सो आई वाज टेलिंग अबाउट द बेसिक आईडिया एंड नॉलेज ऑफ द फिंगरप्रिंट फॉर द लॉयर इफ दिस नॉलेज कैन बी यूटिलाइज्ड बाय देम इन द कोर्ट्स ऑफ लॉ बिकॉज़ दे आर डीलिंग विद द सिविल मैटर्स एंड क्रिमिनल मैटर्स एंड इन दोस मैटर्स सम टाइम्स दे एनकाउंटर विद द थंब इंप्रेशंस ऑफ द फिंगरप्रिंट सो आई वाज टेलिंग दिस that they, they can themselves see the pattern itself because as a layman also suppose they don't know the signs of fingerprint they can at least see the similar kind of circular formation of the world whether it is found similar with the other specimen or not so sometimes there are suicidal notes which are having the fingerprint on the paper but not visible they can also be made visible by using the nin hydrin application ninadin application is a chemical which is mixed with the acetone and 5% solution of the ninadin is sprayed on the paper on the paper and after spraying on the paper it again it can uh, it is heated up to the 80 degree centigrade in a box and after that after 15 20 minutes uh, this fingerprint develops which is because of the uh, Sweat of the uh, sweat of the dead person uh, when he was committing any uh, suicidal attempt and writing something before dying. So fingerprint and thumb impressions are very useful, and they can be uh, the reports of such kind of fingerprint experts must be taken very seriously. And if there is a wrong matching and uh, dishonest matching done by the fingerprint expert. it can be cross examined and can be uh, told to the honorable court that this is not a scientific method of comparison the expert has not taken proper uh, uh, um, precautions and he has made a false opinion so uh, my son manas will be telling all about the documents question documents but the science of fingerprint uh, is not that much uh, vast like a question document and i would request all the participants if they have any specific question because what they actually want to know if that thing can be put to me as a question then it would be good regarding the fingerprint yes participants please post your questions relating to fingerprints 
because sir and manas sir will now move on to question documents before that they would like to answer some questions on fingerprints is there participants who are interested to know you can ask couple of questions before we yes. go to question the documents yes So before they ask question, I will ask question if you permit. Yes, yes. <laughs> Sir, is, is it real that there is not not even a single incident their fingerprints are same as another person? Fingerprints are always found same throughout the life. They cannot be found on the other similar in two person. Okay, no, two two individuals can have same fingerprints at any cost. No, 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 no. No. Till now, it is proved that uh, this is a hundred percent old, hundred years old science, madam. Uh, in the nineteen zero one, Henry, Sir Henry, Richard Henry, has finally, you know, classified this science, and we are very fortunate Indians because the science of fingerprint classification was done in West Bengal in nine nineteen zero one by Richard Henry, who was the Governor General of the West Bengal. And two Indians, uh, Khan Sahib Haji Ajidul Haq, and Mr. Bose, Hemchand Bose. These two persons assisted everything about the fingerprinting collection of the fingerprints from thousands of persons. Uh, and these people uh, were very, very, you know, uh, we are we must be proud that Indians, two Indians, uh, were found involved in this classification of the fingerprint science and. First time in the world it was classified in India. So there are few questions, sir. Yes. Can fingerprints be manipulated? One of the participants is asking. Can fingerprint be manipulated? See, madam, in the courts of law, when there is a civil dispute regarding any property document, people are trying to uh, over, uh, trying to impress their own fingerprint on the already existed fingerprint and trying to hide the actual risk characteristics. So manipulation is done by the opponents, opposite side client. They put some ink on the paper again. Here was a case uh, when I was called for identification, there were two fingerprints. One was the original and in the, over that there was another fingerprint. But the person left half of the person uh, uh, to uh, uh, doubly impressed. So that was clear half part, and I was able to prove, even with the help of the half part of the original fingerprint, that it is found matching because uh, this thumb is having ridges on this bulb. Even one fourth part is printed, we can get five to seven ridge characters, and we can give the opinion on that. So manipulation can be done, but sometimes uh, it can also identify. Okay. So the next question for you is, how long the fingerprints will be on postal letters? On? Postal letters. Posts, post, telegram, sir? The sweat print can live on a paper for five to seven, eight years. Okay. If somebody else has uh, touched again, ah. so it can be found overlapped. Okay. I identified one sender of the anonymous letter because the threatening was typed on the typed paper. Uh, so there was no handwriting inside, but he, he uh, sent this uh, document through the post office and there was a stamp, postage stamp. Mm. And thumb impression of the left hand was found on the postage stamp. Oh, okay. After the application of the nin Okay, okay. So there is another question: Can there be a day where? Oh my God! Day where palmistry is also studied for criminal investigation, since it does study pattern, score, delta, as well as other forms. See, score and delta are found only in the fingerprints not anywhere else. These are the palmer surface, palmer surface. And uh, on the foot, there is a planter surface. 
only these surfaces are found in the body where there is no hair growth. But core and delta are found on the fingerprint of the 10 finger and the first phalange of the finger only, not here, not here. It is found only on the first phalange. So we are always sweating, less or more or less. We are always sweating. And when person commits a crime, then sweating becomes more automatically because of the more heartbeat and perspiration. So that fellow then leaves more sweat. And suppose he has touched the uh, door, uh, door and uh, any, any plastic surface or any glass surface, any window and in the knife and whatever, the fingerprint will be impressed on that object and we can develop it. We can also develop the fingerprint on the pistol, gun, knife with the help of the fingerprint powder. We can lift that fingerprint, we can compare with the suspect specimen. So there is another question. Can they yes. be, can fingerprint be copied and reused if yes, how? No, it cannot be copied. Fingerprint cannot be made artificially or cannot be copied. But what happens? Sometimes there is a genuine fingerprint. People take the photocopy of that and they cut that fingerprint part, and that cut part is pasted on another document, and they make another photocopy of those two things. But that is why in the court of law, opinion on the photocopy is not permitted, not accepted, unless the original is there. So fingerprint cannot be copied. So and my suggestion is that, yes, 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 sorry. In those movies, in some movies, they show that uh, they will have some silicone on that and then use the same fingerprint of others. Is it really true or is it just uh, no, 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 no. shown no, no, in the no, no, movies? No, no. Movies are not real. Okay. They just, uh, uh, yes, yes, no, no. So it's another question, possible. can there be a fingerprint? It's it's asking that there can be fingerprints which are, uh, sir, hand of male and female fingerprints. Can we identify no. it? No. Gender cannot be identified with the help of fingerprint. Yes, to some percentage, 10 to 15, 20 percent, uh, percentage, uh, we can uh, only Resume. Okay, probably it is from the lady's hand, okay. but it, it has no scientific basis. There is. I'll read out only one question, sir, because we have to still go for the next session. Uh, there yes, are sir. a few more questions. One is about our biometric in uh, Aadhaar card. Then there is a question on uh, find well, who's that fingerprint on the document. Says we can find out to him and sir. Then uh, we can we can at any circumstances possible to change fingerprints by way of other methods, other methods or when can any culprit by use of force make one person's fingerprint on other and disassemble, disassemble it? No, madam, it is not possible. Okay. And if somebody has uh, done this, that that will be identified. Connection chala gaya. Okay, sir. Nay, nice, sir. Uh, we can hear you only. Your photo is not visible. Your video is not visible because the bandwidth okay. from your side is little low. No problem, sir. We can see you now. Okay, sir. We'll go to the next. I'm sorry, uh, participants. Uh, we'll catch up with the other questions later. But by now, we will start question documents because that was one of our aims. Yes, yes. My Mishra, sir, and Manas Mishra, they are very, very well known when it comes to uh, question documents. We will take up the questions in case if we have enough time later on. Thank you, participants, for participating actively. So, Mishra, sir, you can continue with your question documents now. Okay. So, I will call Manas also. He will start. Yes. I will start and he will be cooperating me and he will yes, also speak. Yes, yes, as you wish, as sure. you wish, sir. Give me two minutes only, please. We have to introduce Manas, sir. Somebody ah, has yes, to introduce ma Manas, sir. Wait, sir. One minute. Kindly wait. We have not introduced to the participants. 
Yes, any one of you, please. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. I am profusely overwhelmed to take this opportunity to introduce Dr. Manas Mishra, who is a forensic expert and forensic document examiner. He has completed two years apprenticeship in forensic handwriting, fingerprint identification, and forensic photography with CBI and PGC in uh, forensic science from Delhi University. He has solved umpteen court cases by giving expert opinion in the court of law in the past 12 years and also worked as an associate expert in various international cases involving distinguished law firms, namely Prolic, Gordon and Reason USA, Global Law Alliance Singapore, etc. Dr. Manas Mishra is an expert appointed by various reputed institutions, namely Hindu College, Hansraj College, to forensically testify the genuineness of documents such as OBC and SEST certificates, stamps, and other intermediate certificates. His intellectual forensic opinions were sought for by prestigious government organizations, to name a few, Central Excise, Northern Railways, ICSI, Republic of Kenya, SBI, LIC, etc. He penned several articles and journals in Times of India, Bombay Times, Hindustan, and International Journal of Multidisciplinary Research and Development related to forensics and examination of handwriting. Sir, we are honored to have you for this workshop. Thank you. Am I, am I audible? Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nandini, for having me here. It's a pleasure to be one of the resource person uh, for this workshop. And uh, like, uh, thank you for the introduction as well. Uh, I would just like to add something more to the introduction, although it is not that official thing. Uh, officially, I have been working as a question document expert for the last uh, 13, 12 to 13 years. But uh, prior to that, unofficially, I have been, uh, uh, just a second, just a second. Sorry, yeah. So uh, unofficially, I've been working uh, since 1994 when I was uh, uh, in my fourth standard and uh, back in those days there were no computers so my father dr vishri mishra used to dictate me all his findings all his opinions and uh, i used to take my bicycle i used to take the entire dictation then i used to take my bicycle and uh, go to a nearby typewriting guy and then you know get the entire thing typewritten and uh, come back so uh, you know Subconsciously, everything, uh, I, I used to imbibe a lot of things subconsciously because I never wanted to be an expert, but uh, more or less, I used to get each and everything. So uh, unofficially, you can say that I was into the scheme of things. But professionally, after 2008, I started to appear in uh, different court cases and appearing as a witness in cross-examinations as well. So uh, I realized that you know uh, it is just not about writing your findings or writing an opinion. Uh, it is. Uh, it has much more to it. Like once you start appearing into the court, and how well do you present your opinion, your findings uh, to the court? Uh, that is really what matters. And and there there have been so many cases, uh, you know, pertaining to uh, checks, uh, bills, and you know different kinds of forgeries uh, that I was a part of along with my father. So uh, it was always a learning experience. And uh, today uh, uh, I'm grateful to be here, and I would like to discuss about certain uh, you know uh, different types of forgeries uh, what are the kind of manipulations that people are doing over the years and uh, also uh, how can we help uh, upcoming lawyers uh, to prepare uh, the examination in chief uh, to prepare uh, about the cross examination what are the things they should keep in mind uh, while uh, you know uh, talking to a client uh, they should what all the things what all things they should know about the client there should be some transparency so uh, we are going to discuss all those things in brief uh, to begin with i would request uh, to kindly uh, put uh, the the slides one by one if possible uh, there were a slide pertaining to freehand forgeries uh, so i would continue with that if possible thank you thank you so no this is uh, fingerprint Move the slides, beta. Move the slides until he says where to stop. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Next, 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 next. These are all fingerprints. Uh, there must be uh, a separate 
folder for question document file. No problems. Yes, are we are we able to find is this one? Fine. Like freehand forgery, trace forgery. We have I received only those, Mishra sir. Have you sent all the other documents also to us, Mishra sir? Sent. Ha, Manas uh, has sent it uh, yesterday, I think. Yesterday only. I'll just check. I have forwarded whatever you sent to my. Uh, I'll, I'll just check. Yes, yes, yes. I'll just send it. I'll just send. Okay, I got it. I got it, sir. I yeah, have forwarded. Yeah. Okay. Where do you uh, find this? Is the forgery by memory? Yes, yes. All those, all those. Okay, seven okay. Those okay, okay, okay. I think I did not know. Yes, sir. I'll just forward it to them. They'll, they'll okay. be doing it, so you can start. I'll forward it to them. Sure, sure. So, uh, first of all, we are going to discuss uh, different types of forgeries uh, that we have been a part of over the years. Uh, sorry, we have witnessed those forgeries. And how did we, uh, you know, how were we able to distinguish between different forgeries? And then there is another branch of genuine signatures or genuine handwriting that most of the people, they are not aware about it. So I'm also going to talk about that. I'll, I'll tell you what exactly is that once we uh, start watching all the slides one by one. So uh, keeping all these things in mind, we are going to also discuss like once uh, upcoming lawyers are hiring uh, experts, uh, the question document experts, and they are preparing the examination in chief. So what are the various things that they should keep in mind that they should ask their experts uh, to write in their examination in chief. Why? Because uh, later on when the cross examination happens, uh, you you'll always be you'll always be having an upper hand. Why? Because you have done your homework correctly. And and these are so there are certain discrepancies also that we uh, get every now and then from various experts because we are also cross examining other experts. So there are so many discrepancies, there are so many lacunas. Uh, that come across and uh, that that we are also able to learn from them that we are not going to we and we should not uh, repeat such mistakes we should not leave such uh, lacunas in our reports so uh, it's always a learning experience for us so once we get the slides uh one minute sir aajayega aajayega sure, sure. Okay. page diya tha lekin dusra nahi dekha tha mera hi galti hai sir no problem no problem ma'am So most of these question documents happen in uh, civil cases, no, sir? Yes, yes. Uh, in, in criminal cases also, ma'am, uh, in cases of suicide uh, letters, you know, recently the, we, you, must be, uh, you must have seen uh, uh, Narendra Giri, uh, Mahant Narendra Giri's uh, suicide note case. So again, you know, uh, again, a death has happened. People are saying that it's a suicide. And, uh, you know, and now they are talking about uh, whether or not the writing is matching. Uh, with Acharya Narendra Giri's in writing. Now we don't have a subject, uh, you know, uh, standard comparative uh, of uh, Mahant Giri. So, uh, you know, th that is the basic thing that, they, that should be done in order to uh, say if it is a suicide note or somebody has manipulated it or, you know, for his own benefit. So we don't know exactly. Uh, in criminal cases also, uh, it uh, is always uh, beneficial and, and uh, anonymous letters are there. Uh, people are, you know, uh, sending uh, letters. Obviously, in civil cases, we have will cases, you know, check forgeries are there. There's so many uh, things uh, happening. At, uh, and, and uh, you know, during once you start practicing in court, you realize, uh, you know, uh, you realize the dimensions of a question document. You realize how far the criminal mind goes uh, uh, in order to achieve something. And, and uh, trust me, uh, once what we study in a university or in classroom teaching, if you only get, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, idea as to what it is all about, the real show begins when you start practicing and you get the real cases. Because uh, uh, you might be getting so many people who, some of them might be completely fraud because they might be coming to you posing as genuine people. So you have to understand, uh, you know, what, what all is at stake. And you have to make sure that whatever opinion you are giving has to be scientific. 
if it is not scientific it cannot be a it cannot be considered as an expert opinion because at the end of the day you have to convince the law courts honorable judge and if you are uh, able to uh, you know prove your opinion in front of him it really helps a lot uh, so this is again a very important uh, uh, thing to know for every every uh, upcoming uh, forensic expert or a lawyer that doesn't matter what really are your findings but if you are able to prove uh, your findings or you are able to demonstrate uh, those findings to the court that is really what matters and it might happen uh, that you know uh, your case is very strong you have written a correct opinion everything is fine but the other party has good presentation he has uh, you know he, he has uh, uh, you know uh, uh, like uh, make sure that everything uh, is is following a uh, sort of a chain of custody has been properly maintained or not so you have to make sure that everything uh, is clear and presentable in court of law so this is something that uh, we learn uh, like we keep on doing things we we submit opinions we uh, go for real cases so uh, maybe you know keep on gaining experiences and the more you learn the more the more mistakes you make the more you learn sir is it uh, the ek uh, to uh, if even if it's a very old ink there are certain places uh, in case if i want to tell an example in hyderabad charminar is one of the oldest places they say that the old, 100 years old ink ka jo as it is hai wo milta hai or people use those kind of documents also to say that there is a will made 100 years back and this property belongs to me the ink is old the prints are made to look old is it really true or is it only a, a, a false thing which happens. No, no, you're absolutely right. I think people are uh, going to such an extent, uh, you know, they are uh, leaving no stone unturned in making a fake documents, forged documents. And that is why I say that, you know, our job as question document expert becomes much more challenging. Uh, but trust me, uh, forensic, uh, you know, so far the cases that we have done, we we uh, have come across such cases where uh, age of the ink has been questioned or the quality of document the, the quality of paper has been questioned but we have been able to prove uh, this thing in the court of law although uh, the age of the ink cannot be uh, you know exactly told uh, but uh, in approximation uh, we can definitely tell uh, whether the ink has, was made whether the document was made in a single sitting or not or whether what kind of an instrument has been used if it's a ball pen or if it's a fountain pen what kind of ink has been used so ultraviolet photography always makes a job a bit easier regarding that but yes you're right people are doing a lot of things and uh, where we start we feel that okay forensic has taken over the entire world you you get a, a you know more challenging case next time as well so you feel okay we need to learn a little bit more so it's always it's a learning process yes sir. now all is yours your your your, your documents are visible for us to hear you okay. Thank you. Can I can I have uh, the free hand forgery wala document? This is uh, for uh, okay. Uh, this is wait wait wait. Uh, this is no. This is disguised. Next please. Next. 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 This is memory. No no. Uh, next 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 uh, next. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, this is forgery. This is one. This is fine. Uh, this no, the previous one. The previous one. The Dinesh. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, coming across, you can see that uh, there is this guy called Dinesh K. Now, the upper, the above signature is the genuine signature of Dinesh K. You can see uh, the uh, characteristics of a genuine signature, where the line quality is very smooth. The strokes uh, are, you know, so fluent. Uh, there are so many pen jumps. Pen jump is always a characteristic feature of a genuine writing because when you are writing in haste, when uh, you know you are not uh, 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 consciously writing, you are writing uh, as if you know because you are not worried about your signature or you are not forging any signature. So uh, that gives rise to haste, and with haste comes pen jump. So when whenever there is a pen jump, it is a very important feature that it's a genuine signature. Then you can also see, uh, you know. The line quality is smooth. Uh, the uh, smooth, uh, the the strokes are quite fluent, and uh, there is always natural variation. Now, I always maintain this thing, and uh, all over the world, question document experts have been maintaining this thing that once you start writing, even if I ask anybody to write his or her signatures on a piece of paper in two to seconds time, 
then also you would find that there are natural variations. Uh, two signatures cannot be mathematically same. That's that's a very important factor. So because our hand is not a rubber stamp, right? So uh, again, it's a very uh, important aspect of a genuine signature that uh, natural variations. Always search for natural variations. What is the range of natural variations? Uh, these days, I'm very uh, you know uh, <laughs> surprised that in banks, uh, once you your signature slightly differ, they call you. They say, okay, ma'am, you have not done your signature. Though you have done your signatures correctly, you have done it in haste. There are natural variations also, and and also what happens is over a period of time. Uh, there are slight uh, your, your signatures tend to variate more uh, but these people they feel that they should look exactly alike but they don't know if it is exactly alike it's a forgery right so i'll, I'll come to that later but uh, in the in the the below signature if you notice somebody has tried to uh, write dinesh k as it is so by looking at the model this is called as freehand forgery now in freehand forgery uh, the forger keeps a, a model in front of him and he tries to uh, replicate the movements he tries to copy letter by letter dot by dot in doing so uh, more time is given and you can see there there are blunt endings if you see the uh, underlining of dinesh the above signature and the below signature you would see that uh, the above underlining is quite smooth uh, but the below one uh, it, it it has blunt ends the upper one, upper one has tapered ends that is needle like ends that's a, that is the sign of genuineness but the lower signature, the, the underline is quite blunt. That shows that you know the a lot of time has been taken. There are tremors. There are there are hesitations. There are concealed joinings. Uh, concealed joinings, as in like once you stop writing and then you again start writing from that stroke. And you can see that a lot of time has been taken in forging this signature. Uh, if you if you look at uh, look at it from a naked eye at a distance, you would feel that it is the same person has done his signature. But only uh, through microscope comparison or through magnifying glasses, you would find the tremors, you would find, uh, you know, the blunt ends uh, and, and absence of natural variations, which is very important. So uh, this is the most common form of forgery that uh, we come across uh, and as an expert and uh, most of the cases belong to this category. Uh, coming to next uh, slide. Okay, uh, now look at this. Uh, the above two signatures of Manoj, uh, they both are genuine signatures. Now you can see, as I was talking uh, about the natural variation, the signature one and the signature two from top, both of them uh, have natural variations. You can see the size of J, you can see the size of O, uh, you know, can, uh, the, uh, the distance between M and A. So th these are called as natural variations. You know, the hand is not a rubber stamp and every time you write your signatures, these are bound to occur and this is a sign of genuineness as well. The below signatures uh, shows uh, forgery one and forgery two. Now both these signatures are companion tracings. Both these signatures have are uh, exactly superimposing over each other. Like if you superimpose these two signatures, the, they will be mathematically same. When I say mathematically same, I mean that the distance from one point uh, of the signature to the other point of the signature is exactly same. And if you show this signature to the code, uh, like we take superimposition, uh, we make superimposition of the signatures and we put transmitted light to show it to the court. Court immediately gets convinced because two signatures cannot superimpose each other completely. And if they do, then there is something fishy about it. So in this case, it's called a traced forgery. And a lot of cases these days are coming uh, for, of traced forgery. Why? Because it is uh, comparatively easier to uh, execute because you just have to uh, copy the shape. We just have to copy the shape and uh, and as i as i told nandini ma'am about it uh, in banks also they feel okay these two are looking similar so these belong to the same person but uh, recently we have a, a case of a very famous bank where five or six checks have been traced like that uh, so including the sign of the treasurer so uh, you know uh, we are going to we are working on that so this is some this is again a very common form of uh, forgery that is uh, you know coming these days and and it's always uh, uh, you know, easy to find such signatures because, again, the shape matters. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, okay, now this is a case of forgery by uh, impersonation. Now, when I say impersonation, impersonation means that, suppose uh, Dr. Nandini is here and uh, I haven't met her and I don't know how she signs, how what are her signatures like. Uh, and somebody asked me to, uh, you know, sign, thinking that I am Dr. Nandini. 
so what i'll do is i'll 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 just write nandini right i don't know how dr nandini writes so in a way i am impersonating dr nandini so i am writing dr nandini in my own handwriting i am not aware about her habits her individual habits her class characteristics i don't know about that so this is this was a case where this guy suresh chand agarwal now the above signatures are the disputed signatures uh, the below signatures are three signatures three admitted signatures of uh, uh, suresh chand agarwal the three actual signatures of suresh chand agarwal but this guy he had no idea so he has written suresh chand agarwal just like a normal writing uh, so most of the habits were found different and uh, it was proved that it's a case of uh, forgery by impersonation because there were no line quality defects uh, in the above signatures so obviously if i'm writing in my own handwriting there won't be any line quality defects because i am not thinking and writing i am just writing in my own natural handwriting to to pass off as somebody else so again uh, this this uh, uh, you know forgery by impersonation uh, cases very few cases come uh, forgery by impersonation but yes there are so many cases pending in courts as well uh next slide please okay uh now people say that what are genuine signatures so i tell them that there are two types of genuine signatures so this is what are those two types so i say one is your original signatures that you do uh, at a different point of time with natural variations then there is another uh, you know genuine signature which is called as disguised now a lot of people they have no idea about disguise they feel that disguise is also some kind of a forgery so let me tell you that disguise is done by a genuine person <laughs> a lot of times what happens is that people you know uh, filling up an application form in bank or you know taking up a huge loan what they do is uh, they slightly change their signatures while doing it like i am manas so uh, i am i am signing a document but i want to make everybody feel that i am not signing it so what i'll do is i'll slightly deviate from my normal habits i'll i'll slightly you know make it more decorated in a decorated manner in a more ornamented manner you know i'll i'll put a circle over i i put you know so uh, to to make it look slightly different now why am i trying to do this thing because later on when uh, people ask me to admit the signature i would say no i have not done it and people would say that yes you are right because uh, this is his style of habit and this is something else written here but if you carefully see any disguise signature uh, there are no line quality defects in disguise because a person he he does it in a very very you know in a rapid manner so what happens is that uh, uh, and one more thing is there that disguise is always inconsistent so now if i am changing my signature right now uh, with an intention to deviate and if somebody asks me to uh, you know Uh, tomorrow again i have to do somewhere i have to write my signature so obviously at that time i would change it in a different manner because i do i might have forgotten what i did yesterday how did i change yesterday so today if i am changing it it would be slightly different so that is called as disguise so disguise is always inconsistent that means that uh, uh, you know uh, there is there is no consistent pattern uh, I, i i changed m today tomorrow i might change a Day after tomorrow, I might slightly change n, so it is always going to show inconsistency, and that's the uh, most important factor. While uh, in order to uh, you know find out whether the signature is disguised or forged, so uh, a lot of people they disguise their signature and they say that okay, this is our forged signature. One more thing to find out whether it is disguised or not is that uh, people, whenever if I'm call if I'm trying to copy somebody else's signature, I would make sure that it is as close to the model. as close to the genuine model but in disguise writing it is completely different from the original model so a forger would never do that a forger would never make a you know a, a signature which is different from the original signature right so this is again uh, 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 something that would help an expert to find out whether a signature is disguised or forged so it's a very important type of it's not a forgery but it's it's a completely different uh, uh, scenario it's it's disguise a person does it deliberately uh, next slide please uh okay uh, can you can you slightly uh magnify it slightly if it is possible if not it's okay it's a very useful information for everyone here 
uh yeah 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 it's what thank you thank you so much thank you okay so uh this is our way of doing it uh in future if you want if you don't want your signatures uh to uh, to be forged if you don't want others to forge your signatures uh what you can do is uh try and write as long uh, like try and write as many letters as possible like there you know these days what people do is they just you know two or three flying strokes and they say these are our signatures very stylish signatures but the more stylish signatures you have the more easier it is for the forger to copy or the more shorter signatures also it's more easier for the forger to copy so make it as long as possible so that a forger has to really uh, you know work hard on your signature then obviously uh, the, there should be flying start and finishes uh, make it more laterally expanded the more laterally expanded the more difficult it would be for a forger to forge because he'll have to work that extra yard to copy your signature right uh, also if uh, your signature has a lot of pen jumps pen jumps are very difficult to forge because this is something that happens in a at a very high speed so a forger cannot work at a high speed so obviously he is bound to write slowly and that would create more problems for him uh, also uh, try and always write full name as signatures uh, don't write initials and you know just uh, uh, illegible strokes because that won't help you in the longer race you 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 need to make sure that each and every letter is there so again making it harder for the forger to forge the signature uh, likewise i uh, also shown uh, in the uh, Below signatures, the uh, where the you know it is slightly easier for a forger to copy these signatures. So whenever you write, uh, you know, uh, writing your initials or just a small stroke or a curve, it becomes easier for a, a forger to forge. So try and work on that, and I think the more you work on that, I think it will be difficult for the forger to forge. Uh, okay, uh, now I would like to uh, tell you about uh, certain uh, aspects where lawyers should uh, uh, make sure while like suppose if a lawyer is bringing his or her own handwriting expert for the examination in chief so what are the important things that he should uh, uh, make sure that the uh, handwriting expert has done and uh, because that would help your case in the cross examination also first and foremost the first point is that uh, whether uh, the uh, document is original or a photocopy or scanned you have to write in your examination in chief whether the document is original uh, like if somebody has come to my house and uh, he has given me some documents to uh, examine so i have to find out whether it is an original document or it's a photocopy or it's a scanned copy obviously uh, uh, original document uh, if you want to prove anything in court you have to you need to have the original document otherwise photocopies uh, don't have that value in the court uh, and if it is a scanned copy also scanned copy is a clearer version of a photocopy a colored version of a photocopy but still uh, you won't be able to study the back surface a back surface uh, like when i write in a on write on a paper the back surface can only be examined on an original and that's a very good uh, uh, you know uh, example uh, that's a very good uh, way of identifying forgery uh, from uh, genuine writing so you have to make sure that you have written whether the document that you got are original scanned or photocopied second uh, as i told you what kind of forgery have you identified whether it's a freehand forgery whether it's a traced forgery whether it's a forgery by memory whether it's a forgery by impersonation or forgery by transplantation what kind of a forgery is there and whether you have uh, required photographic demonstrations uh, to to uh, you know certify your findings so this is again very important uh, third is whether uh, have you taken transmitted light photographs whether you have taken oblique light photographs or uv light uh, transmitted light obviously to uh, see through the paper in cases of tracings uh, we take transmitted light photography because uh, we have to show superimposition to the court uh, oblique light photography is used to show indentations on the back surface uh, whenever we write there are indentations at the back surface so in order to make them more prominent we take oblique light oblique light is like giving from an from a side angle we throw light on a document and we take photograph third is the ultraviolet photography now ultraviolet photography as ma'am just said uh, she told us about the hyderabad thing that the, there are 100 year old in inks and people are using that so uh, like suppose if i write with a gel pen and then uh, i write with a different pen uh, on a piece of paper so ultraviolet light photography helps us to differentiate between the sheen of the ink uh, whether uh, you know the, the, the instrument that has been used is different or same 
so this is also very important uh, then uh, whether the document photography was done with the court permission or not now if i am writing a report i am uh, giving my examination in chief i have to make sure that uh, how the photography was conducted whether i came to the court uh, i took the photo photographs of the original or uh, whether the client came to us and he gave us the copies at our lab and there we took photography so whatever uh, you did you have to just write it down there also we have to make a comparison uh, you know comparison charts with demonstrations now in every forensic document opinion there are two different characteristics one is class characteristics and one is individual characteristics now class characteristics is something uh, which is superficial which is like the movement of your hand uh, the slant the alignment uh, you know uh, the line quality the speed the skill all these things and uh, while somebody tries to forge a signature these are the things that people try to copy uh, okay this signature looks slightly slanted towards the right or this signature's alignment is slightly ascending so it is easier to you know copy those signatures but the second characteristics are the individual characteristics now individual characteristics differ from person to person uh, i have a different style of writing m uh, dr nandini has a different style of writing m uh, i have a different style of writing i uh, dr vc mishra has a different style of writing i he makes circular dot so these are the uh, individual hidden habits of every individual writer that allows us to find out whether the signature is forged or not and class characteristics and individual characteristics have to be demonstrated quite well uh, and you have to make sure that you have written each and every aspect uh, it has been covered or not also the aspect of natural variation uh, in forgery obviously the natural variations won't be there so you have to mention each and everything also uh, in cases of suspected tracings you have to show the test of superimposition so this is another point that you need to work on uh, also you have to uh, show uh, you have to write down your experience how many uh, such type of cases have you solved over the years and how many cases have you given your opinions uh, how many different departments have you worked for uh, also how much experience you have how many years of practical training have you taken or how many years of practical real court cases have you uh, been a part of so all these things have to be done uh, in your examination in chief uh, that has to be done by uh, the lawyer who is who is uh, you know uh, uh, hiring an expert so once you complete this process your cross examination becomes much easier now this was the case of uh, when the when the handwriting expert has already proved that it's a forgery now when i say that uh, there uh, if the if the case is genuine if i say that uh, the two signatures are genuine and i have already submitted an opinion so what are the uh, uh, prerequisites uh, to write in examination in chief now first and foremost in a genuine handwriting you have to find out whether there are uh, you know you have to find out that uh, uh, you have to uh, write that uh, there are no line quality defects in a genuine handwriting there won't be any line quality defect it will be very smooth uh, uh, fluency of strokes would be there tapered endings would be there pen jumps would be there things like that so you have to uh, make sure that all these characteristics have been uh, written by you in your report and in your examination in chief as well also uh, in genuine handwriting we try to show natural variations so whether or not natural variations are present or if you have not written about natural variations then uh, it might uh, you know help the other opposite party uh, to question you during cross examination so you have to make sure that each and every finding uh, you write uh, during examination in chief also uh, about the dates of the signatures now uh, the admitted signatures that are given to us the standard comparatives uh, to compare we have to make sure that uh, what all dates have been uh, there like uh, some sometimes what happens is that uh, uh, you know there is a there are two different admitted signatures one is uh, of year 1991 and another is of year 2008 so there is a 17 years of difference in both the signatures uh, so you can understand the variation the variable factor you know there would be a lot of natural variations that have happened over the years at that time that person was young but after 17 18 years uh, maybe you know he is not his, his you know hand muscles have become finger muscles have become weak so the ability to hold the pen is not going to be the same as it was in the year 1991 so we have to find out th those aspects as well uh, variation due to old age variation due to you know uh, uh, some some muscular disorder or uh, you know some, some medical disorder 
तो things like that also happen. So uh, you have to write down. He, like if you are writing that one signature is of 1991 other signature is of 2008 so uh, why have you selected these two signatures and why not signatures because the dispute is around dispute uh, disputed signature is around 1992 or 1993 so i should take the standard comparative which is close to that here uh, which is closer so i would rather go for a 1991 or a 1994 signature rather than a 2008 signature because uh, in 17 years of time uh, variable factor makes a huge difference also uh, we have to make sure that uh, uh, all the uh, like should be compared with like so uh, whatever is being compared uh, if i if somebody asked me to uh, you know compare a particular signature in english uh, of a person so i cannot compare it with uh, that person's hindi specimen now if that person gives me a specimen in hindi language i cannot compare because both the languages are different and uh, a very important uh, uh, handwriting principle says that like should be compared with like only so if i am comparing a uh, uh, english uh, sentence or a english signature written in english i have to compare it with the, the specimen or the admitted writing has to be also in english and, and possibly with the same letters l can only be compared with l l cannot be compared with m it's like that so we have to make sure that uh, these things have to be finalized in your examination in chief uh then once the cases of tracings come traced forgery is there and how are what all important aspects uh, you have to keep in mind while uh, uh, you know uh, writing your examination in chief for traced forgery you have already established that the signatures are traced so what all important things you have to write down first of all have you conducted the test of superimposition or not when you are giving your opinion uh, on uh, traced forgeries a uh, traced forgery uh, one more uh, a very very uh, you know careful thing about traced forgery is that uh, in traced forgery even if you have a photocopy document you don't have a, a, a original document with you but you have a photocopy document you can still prove a traced forgery with a photocopy document and it stands in the court why because uh, in traced forgery the it is a matter of shape the same shape so if two photocopied documents the signatures on two different photocopied documents are superimposing each other in their major parts and and uh, you know you can prove it uh, the mathematical sameness can be proved uh, in the court uh, it can be proved with the photocopy so this is uh, just one kind of a forgery traced forgery where photocopy is also sufficient in case you don't have the original in photocopies also you can prove it's a traced forgery also uh, in in traced forgery there won't be uh, natural variations since all the signatures are superimposing each on each other obviously there are no natural variations there is no variation at all uh, every it looks just like a rubber stamp effect you know hand and hand is not a rubber stamp so have you uh, demonstrated it in your report or not you have to write down in your examination in chief also uh, uh, if whether the signature is partly traced or fully traced this is again a very challenging thing that people are doing these days uh, let me tell you a small thing uh, what people are doing is uh they have a they have a uh, sample of a signature and now they want to uh, uh you know execute tracing so what they do is suppose my name is manas mishra so i have written manas and mishra so the forger what he would do is he would trace manas like that and he would slightly rotate mishra he would slightly rotate mishra maybe in an ascending order and he would do like that so people would say that these are natural variations uh manas mishra signature they don't have an ascending alignment but here it is ascending alignment it's okay because uh, you know these are natural variations so we have to make sure even if uh, you know the there is a partly tracing uh, if your surname is partly traced uh, and you can prove it around 70 to 80% also that the tracing has been done uh, it is bound to be taken as a traced forgery and we have uh, different uh, you know case laws also we have different uh, authorities who have quoted uh, uh, that you know in case of part tracing also it can be taken as a traced forgery it can be proved as traced uh, traced forgery also uh, uh, as i told you forger reduces and shrinks the signatures the size of the signatures at time so uh, you know you have to slightly you have to work one step higher you have to one you have to be more alert than the forger you have to make sure that let me just slightly reduce the size of the signature or increase the size of the signature and try to find out whether it superimposes or not uh, uh, there are so many different kind of cases that are happening so many different types of people are doing it and 
trust me they every now and then they try to dupe you they try to figure out okay let's let's let us let me try this method so you have to be one step ahead of them in order to finalize whether or not it is uh, you know a trace forgery or not uh, also now in cases of disguise writing also you have to find out uh, the range of inconsistency now uh, as i told you a little while earlier that this guy's writings this guy's signatures are always inconsistent so have you have you uh, like uh, uh, given a, uh, a graph of inconsistency in your report or not have you proved in your report whether the signatures are inconsistent or not if you are saying that they are this guy's signatures like so these are a few things that uh, upcoming lawyers or lawyers who are hiring their own handwriting experts they have to keep these things in mind uh, while writing their examination in chief and these things are also going to help them in cross examination as well also a uh, lawyer should these days try to find out like suppose if a client approaches them uh, for their case so uh, they should uh, find and if they say that okay a client comes to a lawyer and he says that okay sir these are my uh, original signatures uh, of uh, 1995 year 1995 you can take these signatures so a lawyer should uh, you know try and find out whether the document is genuine or not so a lot of lawyers are coming to us uh, to verify uh, uh, the documents before they have taken the case you know this is something that has happened recently because uh, lawyers feel that okay this client is coming he is saying that his problem is genuine but how do we find out whether the document is correct or not, whether the client is lying or not? So they come to us, they, they, they give those documents to us and we find out and, and trust me, four out of 10 times, those documents are fake documents. And so we, we help lawyers uh, in that scenario and lawyers then, they, they give uh, those clients uh, a lesson. They just tell them, okay, we are not taking your case. Uh, and this is happening uh, all the while. Uh, I would I would uh, be more happy if there are some questions uh, because I have already I don't know how much time have I taken, but I've, I'm. Can I have some questions? Sir, first, can we finish up some uh, few questions which were remaining in the session which sir was answering? Then we will take sure. up yours. You still have 15, sure. 20 minutes for you. We will, sure. we will utilize your most of the services today till 3.55. Sure, ma'am, sure. Yes, so there was a, Mr. Sir, aapke liye tha ye. Uh, they were talking about, nowadays the Aadhaar biometric is used by, uh, in cases like, uh, I don't know what you mean by FP, and uh, are required to solve the cases. Now, how important uh, your uh, fingerprint in forensic subject in present scenario? That's one question. Uh, so, any one of you could answer. I think Mr. Sir was answering fingerprints I'll, I'll, if he likes to take it. Fingerprint is the most important evidence in the whole field of the forensic science. Because DNA of the twins may be found, you know, uh, different. But Sir, we can't hear you. Oh, yes. Yeah. <coughs> Sir, aapka bandwidth thoda kam hai. If you switch off your video, then we can hear you. Vishra, sir. Oh, ha, oh, oh. ha. Oh, video wala band kar di di, tab aapka awaz aega, sir. There's the, there's the camera on the top. You can close that camera. Oh, niche video, just a dikta wo camera. Ah, sir. Band kar dijiye usko. Apka awaz sunai dega. I know. I I can see my father in me now. I'm a technology guy. <laughs> no, no, sir. I can understand. Mere daddy bhi aise hi. Hamen sikana padta hai unko online classes ke liye. Main thoda sa. Ah, stick hai sir. We can hear you now. Sir, you can answer this. Biometric can, uh, uh, biometric can be used as a fingerprint for any evidence. Fingerprint in the biometric which has been taken by for the other purpose. See, the in the US, I know which... they use all our fingerprints in case because it is already in the central uh, database. In the United States, it's in the central database. And we usually take that. That much I know, information. 
बट इज इन इंडिया आर वी इंडिया टेकिंग दैट इन टू कंसिडरेशन दैट बायोमेट्रिक जो लेते हैं आधार कार्ड के लिए वो यूज करते हैं हम कहीं ठीक है करते हैं लेकिन बहुत ही पुअर रिकॉर्डिंग होता है यहाँ पर अभी अभी यहाँ पे उस तरीके का सक्सेस नहीं है दिस नो सक्सेस लाइक यूएस इन इंडिया यू सी द आधार कार्ड यू वांट बी एबल टू रिकॉग्नाइज द पैटर्न ऑफ द फिंगरप्रिंट समटाइम्स आई गेट केसेस ऑफ द रजिस्टर्ड विल वेयर द बायोमेट्रिक थम इम्प्रेशन आर टेकन बट दे डोंट टेक द कम्प्लीट फिंगर सो इट बिकम्स ए डिफिकल्ट thing for us but manual fingerprints i think is more reliable than depending on the biometric in india it is not that much improved like us yeah. okay sir aur ek question hai sir what are the way the accused usually try to erase the fingerprints to escape from liability criminals use to escape yeah fingerprints jo hum log uh, जो क्राइम करता है वो क्लीन करके चला जाता है तो व्हाट इज दैट व्हाट इज द वेस दे डू इट यूजुअली सी सम टाइम्स दे कैन यूज ग्लव्स हैविंग ग्लव्स इन द हैंड देयर वोंट बी एनी फिंगरप्रिंट लेफ्ट बाय देम सो बट और मोस्ट ऑफ द क्राइम दे दे डोंट यूज ग्लव्स दे डोंट यूज ग्लव्स सो दे ऑलवेज लीव देयर फिंगरप्रिंट्स हियर एंड देयर sometimes they touch the glass or sometimes they touch the window so 90% chances are there that he will leave the fingerprints on the crime scene then uh, one more question for fingerprints uh, why is the fingerprint of children not uh, i don't know catchable is not a word but still i use it somebody has written uh, for biometric uh, purposes why children's uh, fingerprints are not taken for biometric purposes See, because of the size of the uh, bulb is very very small in the children, so it is not reflected properly. Because fingerprint is the same, but the size is very small, which is found in the children uh, figure. So it is difficult for the uh, instrument to catch it. Okay. Then one more question, sir. Can fingerprint be used to to relate DNA mapping? in crime scene can fingerprint can fingerprint can also be used to relate in dna profiling in the crime scene see dna yes. fingerprint is a totally different thing the name is given fingerprint but dna fingerprint is a different thing and fingerprint uh, is a different thing so if if the identification is based on both by the dna as well as by the fingerprint then it is a perfect identification okay but dna cannot be related with the fingerprint but the sometimes the fingerprint uh, of the uh, of the sweat may give the clue for the dna uh, extraction sometimes but dna is a different science and fingerprint is a different science yes yes uh, sir aur ek uh, question hai in case if the victim's hands uh, get injured even after i think it's accused one it should have written accused vishal yadav i hope you mean you meant accused one if uh, a victim or accused hands get injured even after fingerprints can they be matched after uh, the commission of the crime if the fingerprint is damaged then can it be used that is what i think uh, it can be matched or not after injury it 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 de depends on the uh nature of the injury sometimes if the whole thumb or finger is damaged then it becomes difficult but after the injury is improved and recovered again those ridges will come back if the injury is not deep. okay sir if the injury is on uh, on the epidermis area then it will redevelop and if the injury goes inside the Uh, if it does miss say in, in, uh, deep into the uh, uh, thumb or finger it will uh, leave the mark on the finger and that part will be found damaged okay sir ek aur question hai in case if the person doesn't have thumb is there any other uh, fingers which can be used for this purpose of fingerprinting see if the other thumb is uh, available then that other thumb can be used or index finger can also be used okay. see all the 10 fingers are important but since the last finger 
little finger is too small so people uh, prefer the thumb because thumb has got the maximum volume of the uh, ridge characteristic biggest one otherwise in the absence of the thumb index finger can be used uh, i think this is not uh, you are this one but still somebody has asked if you any one of you can answer forged photos there yeah kisi a participant has asked me about uh, ask us about the forged photos of hard copy i think they mean by photoshopping is it uh, photoshopping miss lakshmi are asking miss lakshmi are you asking about uh, photoshopping or you are talking about forged photos kuch aisa hota hai mujhe pata nahi hai so any one of you can throw light upon that manas sir yes manas yeah. manas would be better for yeah, this definitely definitely it can be identified in fact uh, when you say photo photo uh, shop i uh, you know uh, it reminded me of another case that came recently where a person had a, a woman sitting on his lap and uh, you know the, the face of that woman was uh, changed from his wife to some other lady so they said that you know uh, this see his uh, uh, infidelity and it, uh, act of infidelity had been put upon that guy so we were the ones who proved it by because we had the original photograph as well so we superimposed both the photos and we found the exact measurement and there was the the blurred area was slightly more in the in the photoshopped image so uh, in yeah in court we were able to prove uh, but when we don't have a, an original photograph then it might be a slightly uh, you know challenging thing to do because uh, uh, again we'll have to depend on various other softwares to find it out Yes, then uh, there is one more question from Heman. If a person in the past signatures on a document and later denies that signature, that it is not him and it is forged by someone, but in real that is his signature. When the forensic asked to give his original signature, he gave some signature, just changing the strokes and style instead of his original one, and he kept the same in some documents before. Uh, believe that one is document is one is not signed by him how the truth will be identified and is he saying that he is not a person signed but he has actually signed it i think that's a very quite big question sir uh see uh, i just told you about the disguise signature so i think he uh, this with this question uh, you know he means disguise so yes a person might be you know right signing his signature and as i told you later on he wants to say that I, the signatures don't belong to him so he would deviate from his normal habit but in that case the inconsistency factor comes to the picture you know uh, every time he is trying to change his signatures it will always be inconsistent like today i am i am trying to change my signature tomorrow if somebody asks me again then i will i won't be able to remember uh, at what degree i changed my that signature because that's not my natural habit so uh, you know uh, i'll i'll slightly deviate here also two days later i might again slightly deviate to some other habit so there would be an inconsistency factor and that would be the major uh, cause uh, uh, of you know identifying that person that this person has i disguised his uh, signature i think my team will take up the other questions because now i understood by this question that we have come to your uh, uh, topic sir manas sir so my okay. team members will do it and i will little rest not that i sure. want to rest but i will give them an opportunity to take this sure sure ma'am sure yes yes lsc you can take the other questions there are some more questions on uh, signatures a criminal law ko teacher ko aisa hota hai sir i am a criminal law teacher so i can i i have the inquisitivity to learn more and more about all this great ma'am yes. great uh mm -hmm. How to deal with digital forgery or deceptive similar documents in this digital era? Can digital document signatures? Uh, just a second, ma'am. Uh, how can the same be proved? See, uh, digital forgery is happening these days. As I told you, mechanical transplantations is are being done. Uh, what people are doing is like in recent uh, COVID uh, pandemic, uh, uh, you know, issue. What happened was there were so many people who had. uh were who were thrown out of their uh, you know jobs and uh, there were so many uh, you know uh, resignation letters fake letter resignation letters uh, given to them and then they came to us they asked us ki whether we have not given any resignation but our signatures was there so we find out that we found out that you know entire uh, you know half a uh, portion of a document was lifted from some previous document and it was made to look, appear as a as a normal resignation letter 
so uh, mechanical transplantation is uh, one of uh, one of the things that uh, you know a lot of people they are doing it a lot of forgers are doing it and uh, a lot of cases also come uh, same goes for signature as well uh, but uh, to identify such signatures and writings again test of superimposition is done because uh, uh, the distance between the text and the signature the distance between the signature and the words you know we have to find out each and everything so again uh, through photographical demonstration we try to find out uh, uh, the mechanical transplantations as well so the next question yeah. is what are the possibilities to clone fingerprints in crime scenes a biometric data is with government what measures and safeguards are available to protect protect innocent people from being implicated uh, I think Dr. Mishra, uh, you may answer this question. Possible. Sir, last session is going on, sir. You see, uh, okay, madam, okay. uh, this question uh, is beyond the our you know, area of work. So, cloning and cloning of fingerprint crime scene. Our well, what? See, this this question is beyond our. Oh, our area of expertise is a matter of research and still it is progress I think question is beyond our uh, is there any medical reason why the signature of the same person uh, but the signature of the same differs with his yeah. own signature uh, you can say variation maybe due to some disorder maybe a broken finger maybe uh, you know there is some 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 problem with his finger with his hand or maybe he is unable to hold the pen uh, but in this case also let me tell you uh, because handwriting is a brain writing uh, it is coming from the neurotransmitters of the brain so even if i start to write with my foot even if i start to write with my left hand or a different finger uh, my individual habits are going to be the same uh, my my class characteristics are likely going to change why because my way of holding the instrument that is the pen might be different now i might not be comfortable holding a pen but my uh, individual uh, characteristics because those habits are coming from my brain that would be same even if i start writing with my foot uh, i would still make join the strokes in a similar manner as i do it with my hand so uh, yes uh, you can say that uh, maybe due to some accident or uh, some medical uh, factor uh, the signatures have changed but only the class characteristics might change not the individual characteristics also what if the person changes his signature constantly on variety of documents is it valid and how to come as i told you uh, if a person changes his signatures constantly on variety of documents that means the person wants to disguise a person wants to uh, deviate from his normal habits so Again, if you want to uh, catch that person, you have to uh, see the inconsistent inconsistency factor. How inconsistent signatures those signatures are from each other. Uh, you know, there there won't be any line quality defects, whether or not there are line quality defects or not. So we have to find, uh, but that can be uh, identified for sure. So the rest of the questions are coming in the chat box. I'll read them out for you. Sure. Uh, Morphing of photos, how can we identify? How can we identify morphing of photos? Morphing, as I told you, uh, morphing of photos, we there, see there are different softwares, people are doing that, uh, where you know you uh, try to find out the blurring pattern of an image, the pixels are taken into consideration, the pixel value is being taken, and uh, we also try to see the, the uh, you know, uh, the featherings uh, which are, uh, you know, Taken. Like suppose if somebody has morphed somebody else's face there. So uh, the anthropological measurements uh, of the body, the face, the, the uh, you know, torso and the other parts of the body, uh, whether the distance is, uh, how, how uh, you know, if there is any discrepancy in that, so we figure it out, uh, we take into consideration that as well. Anthropology is also taken into consideration because uh, you must have seen so many morphed photos where the head size is bigger than the torso size. You know, so people who are doing that also, they are not very expert in their field. What they do is, you know, they just, they know the software, they know how to use the particular software. They just morph it and then they make it viral. Uh, but again, there are, uh, you know, different softwares who identify the same. Sir, next question. 
However, negotiable instruments like forged bond papers are being used in property transactions be identified? Uh, see, uh, again, we have to find out whether what kind of a forgery has been done. Uh, like uh, negotiable instruments, suppose if there is a check also or a, or a bond paper or something like that. Uh, what kind of a forgery is there? Now, what people do uh, in such cases is they, they might insert a few uh, numerals. For example, uh, I, I gave a check of uh, 35,000 to somebody and uh, another person, he puts an extra zero to make it 350,000. So that is a case of insertion, fraudulent insertion. So we have to take uh, transmitted light photographs of the original. Uh, the back surface is also taken. Also, the ink pattern is checked whether, uh, you know, uh, ultraviolet uh, light, uh, ultraviolet photography is done, whether there is a difference between the ink. Maybe, you know, I have written 35,000 from a different ball pen and somebody else has uh, done maybe two, three days later with a different ball pen. Although ball pen looks similar uh, to each other, but there is always a gooping pattern of a ball pen. So uh, we try to take uh, enlarged photographs of the same transmitted light photographs and whether it's a case of, uh, you know, alteration, uh, maybe, uh, you know, some people, what they do is they make uh, uh, zero, ka eight, uh, like they make eight instead of a zero or they try to change a particular number, uh, seven ka four, kar diya, four ka seven, kar diya, it's like that. So we try to find it out uh, through transmitted light photography of the originals. Yes, sir. Next question. Like fingerprint, tongue print is also unique in character in India. Is there any such technology to find such criminal's tongue print? Uh, sorry, uh, is it tongue print or thumb print? I didn't get it. Tongue print, sir. Tongue, T-O-N-G. Yes, sir. Print is, it can be useful, but not tongue, tongue print. Right, right. Lip prints are used quite often. Uh, tongue prints, we haven't come across any 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 such case yet. Maybe it is happening, but uh, we haven't uh, come across any such case. We're done with the questions, sir. Uh, yeah. We have finished the questions. Yes, ma'am. So I, I'll ask you a couple of things for my for my personal learning, and I think that that will include the others also. Yeah, ये uh, sure. paper जो तेलगी का केस हुआ था ना सर, bond paper have been uh, they, they are not original bond papers. As question documents, do you get those paper verifications which will tell you that this see we know that when the bond paper was bought. So based on that, the years of the bond paper and the paper quality, I know that that is one of the ways to find the age of the question documents. How exactly is it? It is a challenge for you all when you go to the court of law to prove that how many years old is this document in the paper and the ink and all that. Definitely, ma'am. Definitely, it's a big challenge because, you know, after after eight to ten years of time, the oxidation happens. Uh, the ink has totally been absorbed by the document. So first of all, we see how much the oxidation has been, how much oxidation has taken place, whether or not, whether this uh, document looks uh, eight year old or a 10 year old or a five year old, or maybe more than 20 year old. First of all, we look uh, like uh, look, uh, regarding that. Also, we make sure that uh, we take all the transmitted light photography of that document. So when you put transmitted light, uh, for, uh, to conduct transmitted light photography, uh, what exactly we, we get to see the, the the material of the paper, the material of the document. Also, if whether or not the keeping condition of the document, how how well the uh, keeping condition uh, has is has been made. For example, suppose if a document is hundred year old or an eighty year old document, the you know, no matter how how well you have uh, maintained the keeping conditions, they are bound to occur. Uh, you know, so many holes or maybe uh, the the quality of paper is going to deteriorate over a period of time. So, what is the degree of that deterioration? Uh, like if I keep on, uh, if I do, if I take a document today and I keep it for 20 years, uh, it also happens in India. See, we we have extreme weather conditions also. There is so much of moisture in air, so many uh, different weather conditions. So it is very uh, very difficult for a paper to look like a uh, you know uh, not look like an 80 year old after maybe 80 year old. So what we do is uh, first of all, uh, the paper talks in itself. Paper tells us that I I don't look like an 80 year old. So Transmitted light photography, uh, oblique light photography, uh, we make sure that uh, we try to find out 
whether the document how exactly we cannot tell how old is the document but we can get an idea that it doesn't look like more than 15 year old or a 20 year old okay uh, dr mishra would like to add something if uh, sometimes what happens we have to conduct the comprehensive document examination to know the approximate age of the document sometimes okay. there are staple marks alpin marks and uh, rusted alpin marks sometimes folds are there corners become rounded and sometimes there is a fold and crackling of the ink takes place on the written document ink is scattered so so many factors are considered not one sometimes uh, what happens ke microbacterial effect is also seen ke bacteria is eaten the document so there are lot of uh, corroborative evidence which is required to prove that document is uh, that much old but we cannot say the exact age of the document say 55 years old no we can say that it is more than 40 years old maybe up to 60 years old it is there is range of 20 years so there is a judgment on the indian forensic science lab madras uh, high court judgment approximate age of the ink cannot be told we have done one case for uh, madam rukmani krishna murthy uh, of no, no, it is okay she called us manas and myself went to bombay helic uh, dr rukmani krishna uh, krishna told me that mr mishra you have to uh, help us and kindly find out and uh, so the, that was the case of the age of the register of uh, hemani distillery at goa hemani was distillery so we worked for them and we were able to prove that exact age was told by some expert but we proved that exact age of the document cannot be told so the judgment came in our favor dr rukmini told me mr mishra we have uh, uh, won the case and our uh, findings were uh, taken by the court as a right conclusion so and i was very happy that uh, dr rukmini krishna murthy is also Uh, he also uh, appeared in this uh, your program, and we are still working together. And uh, in such cases, we have to see the court judgment also. What court relies relies or not? So approximation is okay, but exact age of the document cannot be told because weather conditions are extreme in India. Sometimes people make the older document by putting it document in the tea. concoction of the tea and they write something because the color of the paper becomes slightly you know brown but when you cut the document you will see the white color inside sometimes people use electric iron over the document to put some heat and so that it may look uh, slightly older so there are found some um, you know signing of that pressure, pressure uh, electric that iron so there are so many other because sunlight is the best source if you put the document and take the photograph uh, in the sunlight so sunlight is the best source and every detail of the uh, forgery or the genesis can be identified but it needs observation knowledge study and corroboration given in the books quotes from the books and also uh, we have to write our opinion uh, so that the court may say that uh, this was not possible by anybody how can you do it so we keep every thing in our mind then we go ahead because we are guided to the court we are not uh, you know going to decide the case sir there is one more question uh, uh, i think that is for uh, manas mishra sir it's about digital signatures and forgery in digital signatures uh ma'am uh, to be honest uh, yes people are relying these days on uh, digital signatures but it is not a full proof uh, method and a lot of uh, uh, you know forgeries are happening a lot of cases corporate cases are also coming to us where people they you know try to digitally uh, manipulate a signature and uh, because every information is uh, saved through the pixels and when it comes to uh, uh, you know the original like when we write manually by our hand uh, nobody can replace that uh, thing 
So digital signatures, a lot of people are doing it, but as a result of which uh, there have been a few cases uh, where people uh, are not able to, it's, it's not a foolproof uh, thing to do. And uh, it's very easy to manipulate uh, digital signatures. So uh, again, uh, with technology comes, uh, you know, uh, there are side effects to every technology. So we feel that, you know, we, we are, you know, going ahead and, uh, you know, uh, things are improving, but uh, more or less we have to come back to our uh, manual, uh, you know, way of doing things. So I think that is something and uh, a lot of cases have come over, over the years uh, of digital signatures and, uh, you know, uh, the writing has been, uh, uh, you know, demonstrated. Like I also tell you one more thing, uh, like you just discussed, uh, there was a case where uh, that, that disputed document was a was a computer document. It was computer type document, right? And uh, uh, they people they said that you know it's very difficult because there is no individual habit of a writer. It's all typed by a computer. Uh, it was a it was a uh, you know a threatening letter to a company. So they called us and they said that now we have to find out who has done, who has written this. So uh, we looked at each other and we thought that, you know, there are no signatures, there are no writings here. And how are we going to find out? They had three or four suspects in mind. So what we did was uh, we found out that there were different individual characteristics. Now, what were the individual characteristics? That whenever that person used to write a single digit number, like if, if he used to write nine, he used to write zero nine. Like if I ask you to write nine or seven, you would just write nine or a seven. He used to write zero nine. That was his individual habit. And that came on typing as well. So while typing also that individual habit came. So that was the only, it was the only thing that helped us in finding out who has done it. And later on he accepted it. He have done, and it was all case of a, you know, politic, university my politics ka issue tha. So, uh, you know, so things are happening. People feel that by using digital, uh, you know technology they can manipulate easily but it's it's not that easy i think we have uh, uh, we have finished with the question sir i our honorable vice chancellor sir and our respected register sir have joined for the valedictory and i would request both of you to stay back with us till the valedictory sure. so that the participants also feel happy that all of you are there together good evening vc sir good evening register sir welcome to the valedictory function and my members will take over for the proceedings. Thank you so much. Carry on, Navya. Uh, thank you, sir. Now we are done with all the 10 technical sessions. Now I request Dr. Nandini CP, ma'am, Associate Professor and DSLIC Faculty Convener to give a summary of the workshop. Uh, thank you, Navya. Uh, good evening, everybody. I am I'm really happy and excited to give you the report of the two days uh it, we were first when we started with the workshop we thought that actually this is a program which would have been done in a physical platform is it easy for us so we were postponing the event if uh, our corona goes and things become normal that we wanted to conduct it because things did not work out even in this semester we planned out and honorable vice chancellor sir and register sir were generous enough to tell that okay carry on with your program don't postpone it Thank you, sir, for permitting DSLIC to do this workshop. I think it is uh, to a large extent, I feel it is a success because I've around 1,256 students had registered all from all platforms, multidisciplinary. But from continuously, we see that in the YouTube plus in our uh, Cisco WebEx platform, now it has come to around 250 students and other uh, participants being continuously present. But we have reached up to 370 students uh, and participants continuously being for the workshop. And we are very glad to inform you about it. And uh, relating to the workshop on the day one, yesterday morning, we had an inauguration with our uh, director in our, uh, uh, introducing about the university. Then Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, giving a welcome address to all the part participants and the guests of honors. And then we had a chief guest as Professor Meer Ulduddin, sir, who is uh, Central University Kashmir's uh, Vice Chancellor. And then we had guest of honor, that is uh, B.T. Kaul, sir, who is also a legal expert, academician, and an advocate from Supreme Court of India. Uh, after the inauguration, uh, the Honorable uh, uh, Register sir, proposed the vote of thanks, and uh, we started with the technical sessions. In technical session one, we had the IPS officer so that he could be the curtain raiser of the investigation difficulties. So he started with how they would start 
but he ended up telling that to what extent they would go to the court of law and uh, uh, he's uh, specialized in acp cases these days so he took certain examples from acb how do they rule with that cases and all other matters which has been dealing with from the kerala cadder then we had uh, after we uh, 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 not the sir we had uh, the second uh, this one was dinesh dr dinesh rao sir who is a uh, expert in forensic pathology and medicine he gave a wonderful explanation about post mortem report the the expectations from the court what the post mortem report or the autopsy report should be containing and how do they explain it to the court of law and the pros and cons of the admissibility of the evidence and so and so and then we had uh, the third uh, that is um, uh, our uh, expert in the third one was about uh, can anybody tell me i have written it down so many things i have written it down so here we had a uh, dogra sir who was an expert in forensic medicine he is uh, very popular uh, and uh, i think uh, his profile was about 44 pages to condense it to one two pages was a tough job for us and our members as such and we also had uh, sumit uh, uh, chauhan sir who is a firearm expert and he is working with the national forensic university in the day one and uh, last session technical session yesterday was with uh, rukmini krishnamurthy ma'am so we had a wide perspective of different subject matters on the day one and then we carried on to day two where we started with a recap the previous day session and uh, with the recap uh, we had uh, all the five sessions been introduced and in the sixth technical session we had uh, uh, our aklesh uh, sir who were who was talking about the computer and cyber forensics and uh, how the digital signature and how do they especially concentrating on mobile data and analysis uh, and the tab laptops how do they retrieve the data back and how do they reach the servers to collect the data was one of the sessions in the morning the next section was with uh, forensic chemicals with um, uh, dr uh, uh, mimukti chakravarti ma'am who is from cfsl all the three in the morning experts were from cfsl uh, chandiga vimukti ma'am was there with us so she explained to us what exactly is the chemical reactions in the body and how do they take that into consideration and then we had sumit uh, sunita ma'am who is also from cfl and she was talking about dna profiling in uh, addressing both civil as well as criminal cases telling that how exactly dna profiling has been great use and help in investigation of crimes as such so the last technical session had both of you uh, we honored to have you both in for the validity session also vc mishra sir and manas mishra sir uh, i could make out that the way children and father were his parents working together i know it's a privilege nazar na lag jaye privilege hai that uh, you both are working together and it was our privilege to have two generations one with the previous generation and the other with like my father and we sit together it's, it it looked like same and uh, we are happy to have all of you and uh, i think the participants have been actively taking part and my team has worked so hard from last one and half uh, months i would like to name them because i think most of them work backstage and all of them don't uh, come on the on the screen so hemant was backstage throughout uh, uh, two days uh, helping you out and making a panelist and etc and uh, we had rachna working vishwaja navya soumya was having some uh, problems this time otherwise she is a very active member we had girija we had subhasmita she had a mood so she could not participate actively we had geetika shri vidya surya chandra he was also had some personal problems he could not actively participate sai rishita we had siri chandana tejaswini shashank jinal and spurti this was my team this is my team of legal incubation center who works with me late night if i tell them come there is a meeting at 10 o'clock in the night they have to log in and they have to get trained so we do ha have done lot of hard work sir and this is only part which we are seeing from dsnlu but other than that there is an it team which has been tremendously serving our institution from the day the corona has come otherwise also they do it but now without it systems i don't think uh, we could really run the university to uh, the, the, to of this extent uh, and i i thank the it department and i thank the faculty members who have been supportive i thank the non teaching staff what we call other staff members who have been helpful in conducting and we also thank the press as for what we are doing with this i i i i thank every one of you 
and uh, I would like uh, Navya to take uh, the validatory sessions. Thank you, one and all. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank so you. much, ma'am. Now we will enter into the last session, valedictory ceremony. I invite Vice Chancellor Sir, Professor Dr. S. Surya Prakash for concluding remarks. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Navya. If not today, tomorrow, you may also become a doctorate in the choice of your field, particularly in the field of law. Good evening to all. And I'm very happy that in spite of heavy, heavy rain here at Vishakapatnam, and particularly at my place, this is uh, a downpour because there was a cyclone warning to southern Odisha and the northern Andhra Pradesh. And thankfully, there is no interruption or power cut. And we expect that for another half an hour or so, till our program ends the power uh, will continue. And as I said that I'm very happy that in spite of uh, odds against the nature, this program has successfully concluded as all good things has to come to an end. And this two days marathon workshop on forensic science. And I'm glad that uh, yesterday our friend, Professor uh, Miraj Dev has commenced the program with his uh, expertise and experience in the field of criminal law, followed by BT Cole and uh, Dr. Nandini has given the list of uh, experts who has enriched this entire program. And undoubtedly, the experts, technicians, technical people, the engineers, the scientists, and in the last session, Dr. V.C. Mishra and Dr. Manas Mishra has enriched you. And uh, welcome you, sir. So this is Thank not the end. And I, and I learned through Nandini that you are also the parents of our students. Your wards they are studying in DSNL. I'm very glad that parents, uh, when they learn that what is happening in the university, so this will give a first-hand experience about our activities. And I congratulate all Dr. Nandini and her uh, band of uh, students who have been working very hard to make this uh, program a success, contacting the experts and all these people. And needless to say that uh, administration of criminal justice, one of the sovereign, most important sovereign activities of the state. If any state fails, in the administration of particularly the criminal justice. Automatically, the system and even the state will collapse. And when we look at the great Mughal empire, that is the, after Aurangzeb, the first thing it started was because of the, in the administration of criminal justice, the muftis and maulwis, the presiding officers of these uh, courts, they became corrupt and administration of criminal justice. That is, when the administration of criminal justice fails, people will lose faith in the system, in the governance, in the government, and that will bring down even the government. So there is no need to emphasize the importance of criminal justice, and criminal law is an evergreen area. So for other subjects, there could be ups and downs, but whereas the criminal law is concerned, it is evergreen as long as the human society exists, there will be crimes, there will be offenses. And uh, I also express on behalf of the university, our uh, registrar, Professor Masood and Rao, who has actively associated with this event and uh, arranging all the logistics and giving instructions to the IT people and to all these people. And on the whole, this is a teamwork. Teamwork by, led by, Dr. Nandini, her students, and uh, registrar and the vice chancellor. And we hope, we expect that in future, it's not only the legal incubation center, there are also other centers because fathers are, uh, parents are here just for their for sake of their information. There are also other centers they're also doing. And uh, in this year, for the first time, we entered into the NIRF ranking. So being the head of the institution, 
I will take uh, the advantage of this uh, uh, stage to convey, particularly the parents, that we are also an MIRF ranked university because it's a ranking given by the central government. So, my friends, uh, I hope that in future the Legal Incubation Center will come up with uh, more and more innovative ideas in conducting more and more programs. So, thanks to the technology, because it is uh, an astonishing figure that more than 1,000 students have registered, and thereby, what is ESNLU and how we are conducting that this is, is sends a message to the society and to the nation that we are very active and our students are active, our faculty are active, our administration is active, and we are highly concerned with the latest developments in law. As already experts has enriched, and I once again say thanks to all those experts who have spent that time in coming to this uh, workshop virtually and uh, sharing their knowledge for the benefit for enriching our students' knowledge. Thank you. Thank you, Ananda. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Navya. Bye. Thank you very much, sir. I invite uh, registrar in charge, sir, Professor Dr. K. Madhusudan Rao, sir, for vote of thanks. Good evening to all of you. Thank you, Navya, for uh, inviting me for this. Throughout two days, Our students are enriched with the resource, the knowledge of the resource persons. In our present day society, the more the, the learning of knowledge, the more is the criticality in the administration of the criminal justice system. In the sense that, when the people are learning, uh, they are going through a knowledge society. One by one, the positive aspect and the negative aspects, both are uh, going together. We have to arrest this negative aspect for the purpose of receiving the benefits from the technological societies. But nowadays, the crimes are being committed by the people in such a way that uh, a lot of technological expertise is also necessary for the purpose of investigation and for uh, identification of the crimes. So in the investigation process, some techniques are already employed. Certain things were uh, not accepted by the courts in view of uh, the constitutional restrictions and the things I do not want to enter into now. And uh, certain things are uh, still permitted. But one thing we can say is right now, what is necessary is the importance of a forensic science in a proving the guilt of the accused persons in a criminal justice system is a more and more. And the consequently, so long as the criminal justice system is there, and so long as the technological innovations and scientific innovations are going on in the society, now the forensic science has its own role to play in successful uh, in making the criminal law, the criminal justice system successful with this end in view this particular uh, workshop is organized and for organizing this workshop at the outset i i profusely thank our honorable vice chancellor professor suri prakash for permitting us to conduct this workshop and for a period of two days many number of persons uh, 10 uh, research persons have participated in this and they have enriched the workshop by contributing their might to this workshop towards uh, the development of our uh, academic profile in the university. That for this reason, I profusely thank Mr. P. Vimal Aditya, Superintendent of Poly, CBI, ACB, Vishakapatnam. Dr. Dinesh Rao, Professor Forensic Science Medicine, Chief Forensic Pathologist, 
and Dr. Sumit Kumar Chaudhary, Assistant Professor, Rastriya Raksha University, Dr. T.G. Dogra, Professor, SGT University, Dr. Mrs. Rukmini Krishnamurthy, Chairperson and CEO, Helic Advisory Limited, Mumbai, and Sri Akhilesh Kumar, Assistant Director, Physics, CFSL, Chandigarh, Dr. Vimukti Chauham, Assistant Director, CFSL, Chandigarh, Ms. Sunita Verma, Assistant Director and Scientist, C CFSL, Chandigarh, Dr. V. C. Misra, Associate Professor, Forensic Science, MIT University, Mr. Manas Misra, Forensic Document Ex Examiner. I profusely thank all these persons for participating in this uh, workshop and uh, contributing their uh, academic might to the DSNLU students. Likewise, I appreciate Dr. Nandini, Assistant Associate Professor, DSNLU, for uh, organizing this program in a befitting manner. I also thank the IT department, especially Uma Maheshwar Rao, for uh, extending the technical help for us in conducting this uh, workshop. And uh, I also thank the print and electronic media for uh, beautiful coverage of this particular workshop. Thank you one and all. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We have come to the end of the workshop. I am thankful to all the resource persons for their valuable time and insights. With the support of respected authorities, VC sir, Registrar sir, and Director sir, and un under the able leadership of Dr. Nandini CP ma'am, we could make this event possible. Thank you so much, sir and ma'am. And I also congratulate the team uh, DSLIC. We appreciate all the participants for joining us. Continue with us for future events also. Thank you.